All right. Okay, we're going to be opening the the, uh, plan the uh, meeting for the planning board. Um, now, it, everyone should realize that uh, this is being recorded, so you, there will be audio and it will be broadcast. So, if you have anything to say, just keep that in mind. The uh, yeah. So, the first on the agenda is Gary Hawkins from 179 North Street. Okay, come on up. Handout. You have a microphone right there. Do I need the microphone? Yes, yes you absolutely. It's, it's for, for it's the for cable. Yeah. Um, Doesn't amplify it in here. It's only for cable. Turn it on. Cable. No, I've got to turn it. On. Get the little. Sit next to Michelle. Oh, you could sit next to Michelle here, and uh, you, won't you won't have to hold the microphone. I won't bite. <laughs> well, there's a microphone right here. This one right here. Yeah. So you don't need that. I should stand for my presentation, don't you? Yeah, it always helps. Do you have anything that you have to hang, or do you have things to distribute? No, I know. I, I have, uh, I, I have um, items to pass out. Here. Okay. I have this two, two, two. I think there's six. There are six sets. I'm one short. So I don't mean to hurt anyone's feelings. We can share. Okay. This, this, yeah. This is a top and bottom, top and bottom, top and bottom. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Two should be two. Oh God, I guess it's not enough for these things. Two. They look to me. No, they're different. Let me show the differences. The union and north. I'm not sure exactly. It's just a. Yep. Let me see. Gravel base on a nature trail. What? Thank you. Keep one then? Yeah. No, there's the King Street. We have another if anyone would like it. I don't see any road. We're fine. We're, we're okay. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm Gary yeah. Hawkins. I live in Sherbin and I own Al's Welding. Oh. And, ah, and okay. For sure. Yeah. And uh, I've been there for 15 years and um, I want to make a change. I, I wanted to uh, buy in the, in the new industrial park around the corner, but it just didn't, it didn't happen for me. And uh, the, the nature trail has got something to do with it, too. I, uh, I came here to, and protested a little bit at the, when they wanted to build the nature trail as a quid pro quo from the developer to the town. And I was the one that's going oh. to walk behind my place. To make sure that microphone is turned on? It is. Oh, okay. Well, talk into oh, okay. it then, yeah. And um, uh, so, so that nothing came to fruition about the nature trail. Then all of a sudden, about a month ago, a guy came in with a chainsaw, and we were at the shop, and uh, um, he said that the nature trail was going to go in. So I, I, my original complaint was, not a complaint, but observation was that the people on the nature trail are not going to want to see the backside of my shop. It's, uh, it's not that nice looking, and um, there's equipment, there's welding machines and, and such, and I just know they're going to be horrified, and, and they'll have a different idea of what I should be doing than what I have in, in my ideas. So we went into action and started cutting some trees down to put up a stockade fence. And I, w I have a stockade fence in the front, I, as according to the bylaws, I believe I had to have it anyway. It goes down the side, and I'm going to separate from the, behind the building uh, between us and the nature trail, and then come down to the road beside the woman beside me with um, some arborvitae or some kind of plants. Because uh, I think um, the uh, building department said that I would, uh, I, I should do it with um, plantings because we had taken some trees down. So uh, he, I had a cease and desist. And so in the meantime, my, my plants just got a little bit more, more ideas of what I wanted to do. And I thought, since I was in for a penny, in for a pound, I might as well not just cut the trees down, but um, grade it off a little bit so it goes around the building and so I can drive around the building and, um, and shield it with the, with the arborvitae and with the stockade fence from the people that I'm going to offend. And um, I, have a, I, I have my little drawing here that uh, I had in mind. And uh, I would like to be able to do that, but the building department said that I cannot do that. I cannot make significant changes inside or outside my building because I was uh, 
a non-compliant, a non-conforming uh, usage in a residential zone. Inside and outside? Inside or outside, I believe you said. Uh, I can see outside. I don't think they're accurate on the inside. Okay. But <coughs> it's not well, the issue there. I mean, when I, when I got there 15 years ago, the corner didn't look the same as it looks now. I mean, it, if you guys remember, there was in, in women, there was a big boat across the street that was probably on the map yeah, somewhere. I do remember that. And there was a pretty humble house yes. beside me. Al's Welding didn't look particularly good. My house that I owned there didn't look great. And, uh, and the, the whole uh, road plan was, has been changed since then. So things are more and more on display than they would have been 15 years ago. So anyway, um, I would like to do my little proposal here. I don't think it's going to change the appearance of, of the uh, location. I think it's going to look the same. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I try to keep it painted, and we've got uh, some paving in the front, and I don't park. I try not to park stuff there. I mean, I, I am an offender once in a while, or sometimes, but I'm trying to be compliant. Just uh, one quick question. You passed out two different documents, but I'm not really noticing a difference between the two. There's not. It just one's bigger. The, 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 oh, bigger, okay. the first just one shows, shows the location okay. on, uh, on North Street, and the other one didn't show <coughs> it. So. In this house here, is that the white cape? or No. That's is the there a house in between? No. That's the dark. As you face uh, from North Street, the house on the right is my house on the right. Uh, that I own. <coughs> okay. And... Um, this is his house. It, this shows two lots. Jeez, I'd love to have two lots if I could maybe, maybe I should petition to sell off the, <laughs> the lots. That would be excellent. But, <laughs> well, I have I guess that wasn't that funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> is that lot uh, fairly <laughs> flat is or is it it's fairly it's flat. one way or the other? There's, no, this there's a a just a slope in the back. Uh, with the from the nature trail down to the back of the uh, of the building. Okay, so the nature trail will be uh, elevated a little higher. A little higher. Yeah. What, what's a little? Two feet, division. twenty feet? To me. No, three, four feet. Three, four feet. Okay. Yeah, three, four feet. It connects and I was around. Take off it goes around. It goes along the, the slope and the slope that come down, so I could make the turn it connects without with the, having uh, to go up the down. open space. Uh, how how high is the fence you're proposing to put? I would put a six foot fence, a regular six foot stockade fence. I would think. Correct. I don't know what the uh, idea is about, or the law is about. Uh, lazy loopers. I have a 12 foot set down. I, 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 I'm not really sure why I did that. I just I come up with an arbitrary number. Uh, whether I, I could could I put it right on the edge of the nature trail? I mean, is that a? This is the road. What do you think about that? This is for my colleagues. Okay, so this is the set back. Yeah. Okay. Not for fence. I mean, I think I can put a fence on a property line. So yeah. The only thing, if you're going to put it on the property line and have a survey or stake it out, so it's all surveyed. That's what put us. Okay. That's what put us into into great <laughs> distress <laughs> to see when the guy starts pounding the stakes in, then the guy follows it up with a chainsaw. <laughs> you know, now we know it's for real. It's not. It's not a well, joke anymore. Then you don't have to stake it out. That's uh, now. Is there? An, what is there in zoning that has to do with uh, a? commercial use in a residential zone is there some sort of a buffer that has to be established along the property line that has to be planted a single with a double row, row of, oh, it's a actually single a sing row. single row of evergreen trees that's why you were asked to put the arborvitae right. in because right. th it has to there has that's to be a I buffer that's why I want to put the arborvitae in there. <coughs> so it would be on both sides no i own the other side well, it's still a residential house in, in next to a commercial property. Well, the, the fence has been there for 15 years. I don't know if, if we have any address. Well, you're possession. planning on changing what's done here, right? You're, uh, didn't you say that you were changing what, what's inside here? You're uh, increasing parking or something? Yes. This is already uh, uh, be, be, this is already here. The, the fence between the front here and here between the house. And then this is new. And then the have a right in that. Yeah. So. This is new. I should, I should have so, in other words, one one of the four yeah, sides has a fence, fence at the moment. Yeah, and the yeah. front and, and the front two, and the front. Two, two of the four sides. Two of the yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. And, and the fence is adjacent to the house. Yeah. The fence is adjacent to the house. Yes, but not adjacent to it. But it was yeah. all done between yeah. the it's similar, right on. Yeah. The, it's yeah. almost on the lot line. As you drive yeah. back, I didn't, Union I didn't tape it out, but it's close to the lot line of that lot. But the lots have been combined anyway. Okay. So that was a surprise to me. 
Well, what was the cease and desist for, a- actually? Cut the trees down. Well, you can cut trees down. Is there That's a what specific I thought, I said, well, I didn't want reason? To fight, you know. Well, here's the letter. You got oh, I, you did I get a copy of the letter? Of the letter? Yeah, it's oh, okay. in your package. There it is. <coughs> Storage. And, and uh, he suggested about the, uh, since we're taking trees down to replace them with the evergreens, with growth, with green growth. Can I, can I oh no! You shall be expanded. Oh, okay, that's that's I'm reading that. Thing. Yeah. Um, so the footprint for the uh, the activity pre- that presently is taking place. Right. Um, are you really expanding it as a result of this? Where you're doing the tree clearing, you're going to have vehicular activity. Well, I was going to be able to drive behind the building. Where now I cannot drive behind the building. There's trees there. And, uh, and it goes a little bit of a hump. I mean, if we cut the trees down, we could do it, but then we'd be driving up and down over the hump. I wanted to take the hump out and make it all level on both sides of the building so we're all in the same height. And would there be any base as far as uh, like pea stone or something uh, on the ground? Gravel or, or ground up uh, asphalt or something like that. You know, it would be. Um, well, if it's not paved, you can't park vehicles back there. Are you planning on parking vehicles back there? Well, there's just equipment. I mean, there's, there's, there's some tires on. Well, I'll pave it then. Yeah, well. I don't, you know, I thought, I, would, I thought it was not to pave. I thought the idea was not to pave it. Well, the, the problem with vehicles is they drip oil. So if paving will allow it to be directed someplace mm-hmm. so it can be captured. It won't go back into the groundwater. Okay, there's yeah. a, there's a, um, there are no trucks, but there are some welding. There are welding lost, I'm kind of lost on where where are you going with this? Maybe, Jeff, if you ask your questions, I might be able to glean yeah. some direction. Yeah, so so um, the footprint of activity will expand as a result of the tree clearing. There'll be some activity. And do you see the additional footprint, if you will, being used to, um, to get from point A to point B? Or do you actually see that area being used to, to, for parking these vehicles, this, this equipment? I haven't I haven't expanded my full, you know my equipment in, in years. It's just it would be nice to be able to drive in, back a piece up, and, and drive on back back them in, and then be able to drive out the other side instead of you know shoehorning them in on the right hand side. That was this would just give me an opportunity to be a little neater, and uh, and at the same time I, I'm, I'm I am concerned about the uh, the nature trail. I mean I think I, I have every con- I have every right to be concerned about the nature trail. I mean, there's going to be people there that that I don't know, that, that don't know me, and uh, and that uh, um, are going to have uh, <coughs> might have some opinions that that they don't mm-hmm. don't, don't like what I have. The reason why I ask the questions is because, um, as Steve pointed out, if you get into vehicles or equipment parking, you get into the requirement for some impervious surface which means that unless you're putting something overhead, mm-hmm. you can get into the whole issue of stormwater, you know, how are you containing, collecting, um, you know, managing the, the, the water, which mm-hmm. could potentially be contaminated well, from well, drippings. I would thought that they would have, the, have the, uh, the gravel would be preferable to the uh, pavement because the water could go down through it. I mean, I, the pavement would, would, basically what's done is the pavement would pitch somewhere where it, the water that might have the oil would be collected and uh, dealt with. So we're, we're trying to help you. That's we're fine. trying to help I'm just you come say up with a, oil is a not simple a deal plan. With me. Oil is not a, 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 we don't have, we're not putting oil out in the backyard. Anyone would be free to come down and look around, you know. There's well, the oil referred to is, is drippings from the equipment. Right. As opposed to any oil you're spreading on the ground. Right. But I mean, but I mean, the equipment is not, uh, is not dripping to any extent. And now, uh, and we, we, you know, we're careful of what we do. So you're not going to expand, or let's use a different word. We're not going to increase the number and pieces. There's nothing's changing. I'm not of no, equipment. Actually, I, 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 I may be going down. I may be going downhill in, instead of uphill. But uh, so the expansion the, in the building inspector's letter is basically expanding the cleared space. On right. The right. I just thought while. We were there, and while we were cutting the trees down, and we're going to put the stockade fence up. Geez, maybe we should just so, you know, throw I'm, this out. I read his um, objection to being that he's expanding 
the storage area. The which, use, yeah. Which, which the right side of the property in the original site approval was designated as his storage area. And so now since he's saying he's going to increase his storage area mm -hmm. around the other sides of the building, that's what I'm seeing as mm -hmm. bullets. Yeah. Um, no, I, th I think that's right. I believe that's, that, that would be correct. Yeah. So it's not that he's expanding equipment, it's not that he's expanding the building, but he is expanding that storage area to a larger area around the building. So th that's one part of it, whether or not we can allow him to do that. <coughs> the other question is about, I guess, the trees and the fence. I think there's kind of two separate the, issues. The address. existing storage area that, that, that you have, <coughs> what's the surface of that? Is it paved? Is it gravel? Is it... Uh, it's gravel and, uh, gravel. You know, and uh, ground up... Um, Asphalt. Asphalt, yeah. <coughs> so, I mean, my opinion on the um, screening of the building, regardless what you use it for, that to me, I want to table that item for a minute and just more talk about the screening of your site. Just sort of protect yourself and add some privacy from the nature trail as well as, you know, add a buffer of trees. I, I like that idea. I think that that's a, a good idea, and I think that's good for your site. I think that's good for the nature trail. Not as certain about the expansion of the storage area. Well, it, now, what you've been saying is not really that you want expansion of storage, the storage area. What you want is just to be able to drive around the right building. Around. So you, you know, just really want to go. Well, What's that? Park. He's saying park them there, too. Well, that would all be on the right-hand side, though, wouldn't no, it? Well, uh, if, I, had, if I, I would use the liberty to park there without I had this new area and I could back the stuff in because we're kind of jammed up on the right-hand side. I mean, we've been surviving with it, and it's not that I couldn't. But, uh, um, this seemed like the uh, prime moment to act. Because I any any place where there's parking involved, it's in zoning that it has to be paved. Mm -hmm. The only time it doesn't have to be paved is it is if it's a recreational use. Or we grant a waiver. Is that we grant a waiver? We grant a waiver. It's a variance, isn't it? Mm. Well, neither here nor there. It's not yeah. typical in this yeah. this case. But yeah. I guess my what I'm having a hard time with is that he's not really changing. His operations, his, his equipment, or anything else. Um, the existing equipment is being parked on a gravel area right now. Anything, you know, like a vehicle, I've gone by there, it's normally parked on the driveway at the end of Union. Yeah. I mean, that's what I've seen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I went by there today myself. Um, I, I, you know, when you get to these pre existing non conformings, I think you have to kind of look at it a little differently than a hard and fast on the existing site plan, you know, that it's adopted years later. Right. But this is also a good time to address that all equipment should be stored out of sight mm -hmm. on the side Which or rear because it is not stored out of sight. Well, it's, I mean, it's and obviously. always out in front of the building. Always. I drive by it twice a day. And like Michelle said, you know, the screening's good. Maybe we need to expand on that screening. Well, not to, not to, s to disagree, but I'm going to say 75% or more of the time, there is no equipment there. There's a truck there. And I would think well, I have, I have a large a generator parked well, in the no, front of the building. That's but, I mean, how often does that happen? That doesn't all the time. No, I, I think we could monitor it, and I don't think we, I don't think it was. It is that much. Does anyone else have an opinion on that? I mean, does anyone else? They don't drive by, by it drive twice by a day it. like I okay. do. But uh, there's a truck I've there. I've seen it there, and I haven't seen it there when I drive by. I mean, I I, I monitor it myself, and I tell my guys put that stuff away, because we're going to get in trouble with the planning board. And and uh, uh, but. Uh, uh, I really can't apologize too much for the truck. I mean, that's that's part of America. I mean, that, it's it's my truck. The truck is always parked on the apron. Yeah, and, and it's you know it's I don't think it's equipment. I think it's a, it's a truck. I mean, the guy across the street got a truck. The woman beside me's got a truck. The guy down the street. It's my truck. I don't know what to think about that. I don't think the truck's the issue. Huh? No, okay. the truck the isn't the issue. Okay. It's the equipment that, that's parked out and there. I, that's, I'm that's going to say that, that I try very hard since I had a. Uh, uh, Bullock, what's his first name? Bob, Bob Bullock uh, gave me a, a, a wake-up call some years ago. Someone, one of my friends, left a piece of equipment there and ruined it for everyone. And uh, Bob Bullock sent me the nasty letter, and uh, I think we've been pretty compliant, you know, <coughs> since then. I mean, 
sometimes there is something there overnight. You drop it, you pick it up. But um, I, I try. Anyway, I try. Well, I don't really have an issue with him being able to access around the building. Does anybody else have an issue with no. that? I don't either. I think it's just I wouldn't want to make the non-conforming use more non-conforming by giving you now a larger footprint for more equipment, more vehicles to potentially be stored on I'm the not, site. I, I'm not particularly without I'm, the, I'm 70 years old. I'm, I'm, I'm out of the picture. And, and, and I understand and I trust that, but you know, without bringing some specificity into you know number of vehicles or something like that, if we did that, then that might address those concerns. If mm -hmm. there's some number that we can agree on, yeah. and then that might carry over to a follow-up meeting. You know, I'm not sure we can address that, you know, this evening. But that might be a reasonable way to ensure that a non-conforming use doesn't become more non-conforming. That's the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. uh, but we want to, you know, we want to support you and yeah. um, support but your business. I could see that, Jeff. And so long as it's, a, I think, an equal quid pro quo, that we expand the screening to you have a very high profile site and if we could find a way to screen well, 50 years it's been there though i understand or well, 60 years i, don't I know. i'm not going to doubt you okay. okay but but the point is the same way as steve sees it every single day and greg sees it occasionally and i see it occasionally mm -hmm. it's it's omnipresent whether we like it or not so i guess would try, would like to see if we could work with you regarding the screening. Well, I wanted to get out of there. I wanted to move up the street to the to the, you know, to to the. Uh, um, Shire. Yeah, and it just didn't work out, you know. So now I'm uh, I'm I'm here. I'm still here, and uh, there, and um, I'm just trying to make things a little better. And then, the nature trail, the quid pro quo, given to the town by the guy who had had a. A dog in the fight uh, affects me, and I think that should sure. be taken into account too. Sure. So. Well, uh, there's a there's a proposal that was put to you. It says, uh, you know, if you could specify, listen, I have four wellers and three this and mm -hmm. two of that, and that's what I'm going to store, and I'm not going to okay. store any more. Um, My wife. Uh, we need a mic. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, dear, dear. Um, I was just thinking if there's one piece of equipment, I know it, um, sitting out there where everyone can see it. Well, I know the way the guys operate. If they could come around this building and park where Gary's talking about coming around, it would be behind, be behind a screen, and the offensive piece of equipment would not be seen. So it seems like... It's a win-win, guys. Oh. <laughs> That's what well, I think we we're, we're all taking that, that into yeah, consideration. We're saying the same thing. I think yeah. we just want to make sure we're it digesting it for the first time okay. here. You know, so. Twice as much, twice as many vehicles, twice as much equipment. Now you've taken the, a non-conforming situation. You've made it twice as non-conforming. Mm -hmm. That that's what we just need to protect. <coughs> it's not um, just you. Everyone from that right. scenario. It's if you sell. Right. What's what's the following uh, use going to be? Well, the you know, new guy's got to fight his way through the deal. <laughs> so uh, I think that. Uh, well, there will be restrictions. Yeah. That's that's what it is. Right. Um, and I, I'm just wondering. I just think that if there's going to be equipment, uh, that there should be some sort of a paved pad that with us some collection of the uh, of the runoff. I mean, that's. And you're proposing to put gravel base all yes gravel all around. Well, I thought that was the um, the more acceptable choice. <coughs> Is it true that the only piece of equipment that has oil and therefore could leak oil is the one or two trucks you have now? No, they're they're innocent. I understand, but you. Uh, how, I'm sorry. How, how many trucks do you have now? I have. I have only one down there. One. Okay. I I don't know anything about pieces of welding equipment, okay. but I assume they don't have oil in them. I mean, they it, do. They're, they're, they they're, do. Uh, they have. They have uh, wheels and plates, you know, and, and registration plates. But um, I is there oil other than the lubricating oil in the axle? I mean, is there, the, does welding equip, it, it's it doesn't have gases, engine, right? There's no, it has an engine, yeah, it has an engine. An engine. Yeah, has an engine. Yeah. Yeah. An engine. They all have yeah. engines. Yeah. Yeah. All right. okay. I've got some air compressors and, uh, right. and some yeah. uh, so and welding machines. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, but he only has gravel now. What would have been the rule when this was put in? Was gravel acceptable, or should it have been paved? Or? 
Probably well, back then. Back then. Back then. Years back ago, then, yeah. yeah. There was no didn't. requirements, I'm sure. They didn't even have stormwater separators and things like that back when it was uh, put in. They used to, people, people, not, not this gentleman, but used to dump hazardous mm -hmm. waste out in the, in the farms, in the woods. Right. 60 years ago. Right. Southwood. Mm -hmm. but, but how large an area would you re require to be set aside for parking and storage of vehicles or storage of equipment or I didn't take like the square footage of it uh, but uh, uh, there is uh, 50 by 30 1500 square feet on there's 1500 square feet on the existing I would say and then on the other side it would be about 30 no a little bit more 36 by 50 1500 and uh, and 300 1800 square feet there and we would add probably 12 1200 square feet on the other side what if we looked at it from this angle he's not increasing the, the pieces of equipment he needs it for circulation reasons to get those things around. Right. If he's not going to park those circulatory vehicles and he's not increasing the number of pieces, therefore stored, which he's entitled to and has today, can we find a way to look at it from that angle? I'm not certain they're saying they're not going to store them back there. I'm hearing them say they're going to park that, you know, objectionable piece of equipment back there, that he doesn't like to have to squeeze them in. It'd be nice to be able to spread them out. So, I mean, if it were for access and not storage, I'd agree with you, but I, I don't think we're all on the same page with I think it probably will be used for storage. Uh, yeah, it, it, it just would be so much easier for us. Sure. Can, we, when, can we trade yeah. it off? Can we trade off one side to the other? I think he wants them both. So we've oh, got them now for, stuck for storage in. all the way around. Y yeah, yeah. They, but it, it, it is it mainly circulation or is it storage all the way around that you really want? A little bit of both. I could take the things that the offending vehicles that are in the way and I could make the swing and then back up and drop them off. So every, you know, there would be less on this side than there are. Then there would be, you know, and that way we could still drive around, back up to something and take it out without having to take the <coughs> forklift and, and start to shuffle, do the Chinese shuffle there. Uh, I think uh, the limitation on pieces is probably the only way to really yeah. get to, yeah, get to exactly. the intent of Gary, here's my concern, and my biggest worry for you, and okay. believe it or not, my probing questions are for your benefit. Okay. And that is, I'm trying to find a way to see if there's a way for you not to pave and therefore put in collection pieces and because it's you know gas and oil separators and things like that I'm trying right. to find a way that you can come out of this a little better than it could go <laughs> so we're trying to okay we're, we're trying to you know we just dropped it on us so we're, we're yeah. digesting okay. it on the fly here so. <coughs> if I bought a, a lot up one in, in the Shire area I, I, would I be I would be faced with all these same concerns. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, You'd have to be built in already, thing. though. Yeah, I mean, I can't build a stockade and drive in it and close the door behind me right. and, and no. keep the Indians out. No. No. Man. No. We wouldn't even be discussing gravel if you were up there. Okay. Yeah. But now, look where I am. Yeah. Yeah. Little country fellow <laughs> stuck in the back there, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, Steve, is, is it acceptable to you, as, as Peter suggests, uh, and uh, to create a... a document that says we store presently X, Y, and Z and... Uh well, I personally think that if, if it's being done, it's, it's not what's acceptable now. If, if you only need a certain number of square feet for, to capture what it is we're concerned about, then we should probably build in the number of square feet that we need that would have that would collect stormwater. It's the same thing as what is down on David. David Road? Is it David? Probably. Yeah, yeah the, the, there's, a, there's a company down there that deals with um, geologic. Oh, yeah. They have this, something very similar to what you have. It's not entirely paved, but any equipment that they have on their site is stored on paved, a paved area that has drainage associated with it. 
So that's also an existing right. so, so industrial what, tank. What that, right. what that would do, if we mm -hmm. went in that direction, what that would do is it solves his circulation problem. It doesn't solve his storage problem in the sense that he's now confined to the same, maybe even smaller uh, footprint for, for storing his stuff than he's using today. Well, it, it depends on the design, though. I mean, it, I mean, if he's clearing larger, a larger space, then well, maybe it would be easier. If he's going to put the storage out back, it's it's likely to be, at best, the equivalent square footage of what he's using today for for uh, storage. But if it's if it's in the back, then they have the paving in the back with the stormwater collection. And you, you you could pave a twenty foot wide strip around the perimeter of the side and the rear and put the equipment on that. The right. problem is once you go to pavement, then you have to have a collection device and you have to have some kind of a separator device. So you're talking ten thousand dollars worth of and structures and right. plus pavement. You know, it's, it's $20,000 or something tag item now. You could pave it and, say, have it shed into, like, a bioswale. That's not quite as good as a separator structure, but it's better than he's got now. Uh, it'll take up some space. I don't know how the geometry works, but... The welding equipment, what dimensionally, about how long are those units? They're all, all sizes. I do uh, so big welding and small welding, and some of them are tandem axle trailer, and some of them are single axle trailers that you know, they're going bigger than that with a, with a fork on. So they can be, you know, from five feet or so to, what, 10, 15 feet? 15, 15 feet. 20, yeah. So, I mean, what a lot of, what, what, companies migrate to eventually is um, the understanding that they're better off sheltering the containment area rather than deal with contaminated water and having to pump it mm -hmm. into a device and potentially create hazardous waste what have you so they'll put you know maybe you can I, I'm not familiar with your building whether you could extend something um, some type of awnings or something off the, the building um, to I've them. been terrified even to think about something like that this seems like so much more uh, reasonable aesthetically than 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 modifying the building. I mean, if that's an answer to well, I'm it. not familiar with your building. I'm okay. just I'm just saying that. Yeah. I mean, we did this at the landfill, right? There was issues with you know water and such and contaminated water, and and the town made an investment to reduce the amount of water <laughs> and therefore reduce the amount of waste. So there, I, you know, I, I'll just you know I, I personally wouldn't mind exploring some of the mm -hmm. stuff with you. I mean, my background is in you know, chemical engineering and running chemical plants. So, if I could be of any assistance in terms of coming up with some ideas, my here. feeling is that I've, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I try to, uh, I want to offend as least number of people as possible, where it looks pretty much like it was when I bought it, and the changes, radical changes, I, I, I thought might create quite a stir. And so, if you're truly worried about aesthetics and screening and privacy. And you really don't want to be dealing with paving and engineered solutions for, you bet. for stormwater you bet. And separation. You're probably best off just leaving your little gravel lot just like you have it right now. Uh -huh. Don't change anything except putting up your fence and your arborvitae and you're done. Right. That's it. You don't get any extra access or egress. You don't get any extra storage. You just get your privacy and aesthetics and your... Equipment is your equipment. Well, Tom, what's required for a, uh, a, a bioswale <laughs> for, for the... Uh, I mean, well, the I mean, it, it, it's just the way you construct it. You need a couple of feet of organic uh, infused uh, soil. Uh, you can or can't have a liner on the bottom. It depends on how it's designed. But the simple thing is overdig it by a couple of feet, put in some organic soil, some plants to uptake the nutrients, and that's probably a lot better than he's got now so if you shed water from pavement into that it's a low-tech solution and I think for the low in, what I presume is the low intensity I haven't seen the place um, it, it's better it, it's an improved existing condition right it improves the existing it, it, how it many how many pieces in total top end mm, oh, oh, some stuff is out but uh, 
It varies day by day, too, you know. So Average. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's probably a dozen, a dozen pieces. Twelve pieces with motors? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're worried about leaks. That's it. Right. It's not like you're changing. Well, anyone's bit. welcome to come by without announcement. I mean, you know, if you, if there's any concerns, and I don't think you'll find anything. If you're, you're my neighbor, I guess, uh, and uh, you're welcome to stop, you know. Just well, I live down on King Street, well, so. Well, oftentimes... N maybe not someone around, but you know, it's poke around. I feel free. I got nothing to hide. So. Well, Michelle's suggestion, you know, that's pretty straightforward. Right. That, yeah, you I mean, don't you need our permission to put up trees and <coughs> put up a fence, right? Yeah, I think he does. That's he does? what Bob Bullock's letter said. I thought, said. No, I thought no, he no. was clearing I, the I land. Think he put That's up for the, the expansion, right. He was starting to clear the land for this added storage. Oh, just put up the area. fence. No, to do the rest of it, I put think. Put up the fence and put up the trees. Yeah. You don't need We'd that. have to issue some kind of a decision okay. In it, I you guess. don't need our permission to do that. Okay. Um. Does there anyone want to consider it? I consider more. I mean, that's that's like kissing your sister, you know that that answer. I mean, I I uh, I, uh, I I appreciate <laughs> I, I appreciate. That is an old expression. Well, well yeah, I appreciate I, the, the answer, but it. I'll speak for I, myself. I, I'd rather that. fight than. than <laughs> if, if we can, I got that already. If we can agree on a number of vehicles, so that we're not making the situation more non-conforming than it already is. Yeah. Um, I'll speak for myself that I wouldn't be too concerned about whether they're all parked in one place or another as long as there's sufficient, um, you know, buffer in terms of fencing, abrovity, what have you. That's me personally. Um, but there would have to be a limit in terms of the number of, you know, the vehicles, welding machines, what have you, so that we don't have now you know, twice the number of right. You know, that, that's not my. It's not my intent. You're half over there. Now you've, you've essentially made a non-conforming situation more non-conforming. So put that, a number. That's me personally. Um, you put a number on it. Well, how far is it from your building to the the fence? From here to here. Uh, this is the fence in the back. Of uh, front from, to back. From here to here. Yeah. Probably fifty feet. Oh, from there. From here uh, to here. Thirty-six and. Uh, well, there's no fence now, but it would be like 40 feet or something like that. From here to the fence. Yeah. So from the back of your building to the property line at the Nature Trail, it's 52 feet. I would guess. Okay. So that you have 40 foot wide piece. There. Yeah. Because you know, like the 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 the, the concern that I have about br trying to bring it up, bring it up to what's required now, and that is uh, if if you could get all the equipment that you have. I park know, in the back here. Years, right. I, I would e even be tempted to say to move the fence back a little bit, and 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 I like the idea of the bioswale to be able to have it run off the pavement. You don't have to actually collect it in an oil water separator. You just have it go into a bioswale and have it treated by plants in that area. But you're looking for it to, to be paved the whole place, though. No, no, no. I only want where you're parking stuff. Yeah. So it could be it could be gravel all the way around. But say that you're going to designate the back 15 feet or something with with pavement and then, then have another couple of feet to be able to ha have a bioswale so that all the, all the runoff can go into that. I mean, that's a good way to, to uh, yeah. sort of have a compromise on, yeah. on treating the runoff. So I need, a, I need an engineer, I would that's say. I mean, is, 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 do, yeah. do you feel as though that's a... Uh, I feel it's overkill. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm with... Uh, well, this is what we've done with other Jeff. people that have done s comparable projects. Fair, fair. I still think it's overkill. <clears throat> well, if there's a dozen pieces of, of equipment back there... But you know what? There's a dozen people there now. That's why I don't Steve think there's a dozen there now. Well, I don't know. I'm just taking... Just saying if there's one, there's there. 30. It, I mean... Yeah. It's the, it's, Whatever's it's, there is there. It's, it's there. there. And Not any worse than it is today. I mean, right. That, that's <clears throat> where I am. Well, you said that, that they got wheels and plates, therefore you're paying excise tax, right? Yeah. In the town of North Pole? Uh, I take the fifth on that one. Uh, what do they mean? <laughs> no, so no, I, the I kind of have mixed feelings about it because <laughs> it's... 
you know, it's what's there. It's no worse than what's there today. But we know a, we know a lot more today than we know when this was allowed. And so if he's coming and saying, gee, I can benefit from this and I want to make some changes and it would help me, well, should we do it in a way that maybe serves our community, serves our environment a little bit better? And well, that's a, that's a <coughs> fair, good? but that's in <coughs> conflict with the other solution that you offered to him, which is put the fence up and go away. <coughs> well, it's not in conflict. No, no, no. It's I'm saying if you don't want to spend any money at <coughs> all on on mediation and you weren't looking to come and get that kind of a feedback, then you still have the option to put your fence up and your trees up, and that's fine. If you're looking to, if your goal, I'm really trying to get to the root of what his goal is. And if your goal is that your site's not working for you and you really need different setup for parking your equipment and storing your equipment, then present it that way. Don't present it as the nature trail, and don't present no, it I'm as not, buffering uh, from my uh, neighbors. That's present not it as it's not working for me. I want to change it. Then absolutely. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I don't try, I'm not trying to say that the nature trail is what generated my actions, but I want to make it work for me in a different way and park my equipment this way around it and pick them up and take them out as I go. I'm not trying to say that I'm doing anything to try to help Norfolk. Tom. <laughs> Taking it a step further with your bio <laughs> swill. Get to the root of it. <laughs> Can you, does it work with the reconstituted or reclaimed um, asphalt? If the, the reclaimed asphalt, which has been used there before and currently based on his representation, mm -hmm. will that shed it to the bio swill? Uh, probably not. Um, we could try to. Just trying to think. If, if you had some way to increase the permeability of the soil without necessarily paving it, it would shed better. Why would you increase the permeability of the uh, soil if you want so, to shed? So it would shed into the bioswale. Non-permeable. Uh, impermeable. Yeah. Uh, Non-permeable. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do listen but to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't listen to myself, <laughs> apparently. Listen to all of us. I know. I do listen to myself, so yes. I knew what he was meaning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Um, uh, again, you know, there's a handful of these pre-existing non-conforming sites here, there, and everywhere, and our goal is to try to find a way so the, you know, the existing businesses can move forward somehow, and that's... That's where I'm at. I think a good middle ground between the structures was Tom's suggestion, and I don't think it's that costly. Um, I, I, and <coughs> to be honest with you, I think I'd like to go through the site and take a look, and yeah. I'd like to know some measurements as well on existing storage uh, Yeah. so we can have a better idea. You're dropping a lot on us for a first night. Yeah, no, I, just did, I didn't think it was that hard. <laughs> oh. uh, Unfortunately, know you know, know when you're in a at. residential area, <laughs> yeah. Everything's hard. But you're welcome right. to come. Welcome to come and, and look and see if we've spilled any oil. And, and uh, We're not, and, you know, well, no, DEP I mean, does that. We don't. We're, we're, we're more worried any, about what's going to happen any afterwards. judgments you want to make, you know, and uh, um, I'm... Uh, I think that what he's mentioning about making it more impermeable, your issue of using the existing gravel, I, I saw on this old house that they would spray it with a with an asphalt coating that would would seal it is, is that something that would be Sorry. reasonable <laughs> yeah that's that's the old macadam approach uh, might be worth a try I mean, I you think could just grade what's it, what's there and yeah. towards the swale and then seal it I mean, the sad thing is this. By the time they spray it, you're probably putting more petroleum <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> it's ever going to drip. I don't think it's going to go through. I think it's going to No, but it's going to be more than ever drips out of the ground. What about if they scraped it back, put a clay, a clay surface, that, and then yeah. cover it? Put, put, or even mix clay into the surface. Rototill it in. Get, get yep, some clay get, and there you go. It in. All sorts of ideas. Well, uh, let's, uh, Gary, we're, I'm going here with this. Is, is I'm trying to find a way on a cost effective basis for you, you know, to avoid. An asphalt job and, you know, obviously a structures job, which we've kind of moved past that at least, um, if it can work. So we're working through just for... Let's be realistic. Now, uh, I, I'm at the end of my career. Something's going to happen down there. It's going to get sold. And, and uh, then I, I don't want to put a whole bunch of money in this thing and, uh, and, and not be able to recoup my money. I've been paying the, the high taxes 
because I'm non-conforming, I've been in, in given my reports, what I do with the place and all that. And uh, this may be as I'm looking for a temporary fix, and 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 who knows if I, if someone else buys it, I'm sure they're going to have an awful time having a business there. Gary, but this this is more scary than what uh, than what we're looking at right now because there'll be an expectation of what you have there then, as to what they can expect on the purchase, and that's exactly what concerns us. Yeah. Well, you, you know, and as far as the taxes go. We're the supply side of the equation. We're not the spending side. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah we're not we're not necessarily concerned about you. We're always looking down the road. So if if it's sold, we just don't want to have created a monster for ourselves by by saying, oh, go go right ahead, put gravel all the way around it to the property lines and. So. And and then have someone come in and park fifty well, I mean, machines. Who knows what happened? Maybe right. Uh, I mean, I tried to sell it to the to the developer, and I didn't get any results. And, and you know, maybe by that time it gets sold, it gets torn down, and it, it just all goes away like a bad dream. Well, another way to look at this is, you know, dimensionally, you have so much space on the right side. Now you only have so much equipment, but had you not come forward when we had this conversation. You, you could have brought more equipment into that area. Um, I'm guessing that it, it could have accommodated yeah. more. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying. Yeah. No, yes, yes. So yes. now it's, it's another way to look at it. So by us putting some type of maximum in terms <coughs> of the, you know, the number of um, uh, pieces of equipment, I think there is some protection. And perhaps the trade-off is that there's no specificity in terms of it having to be all in this location. But I think there should be some specificity. It should be perhaps between here and some other area that we should perhaps see, you know, a site visit, what have you. Um, so perhaps we can make the situation, if, if we can't make it um, less nonconforming, we may be able to protect the town from a more nonconforming situation with more vehicles, et cetera, if you were agreeable to some type of um, cap. Yeah. On, and that's what we need to we need to get an understanding of what equipment is there and how many pieces and 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 perhaps something like that could be structured um, at least that's that's right my thinking I yeah. think that's I think if you Peter quantify it for us and your your net result is I need 10 15 percent more storage or something because it needs to be laid out this way for access maybe we'll have a different conversation okay and the other thing is I I like the idea about cleaning it up and having a um, a driveway right around it. I mean, it just makes things a lot more work-wise for us and uh, a lot neater. And I, and I certainly don't see as it's going to offend anyone's view with the way I'm going to do it. Uh, I just hadn't thought of all these other issues that you guys have raised. Well, there's a Bible that we have to live with, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. You want to call it off in some way? Oh no! You can come back if you want. Yeah. If you, if you, if you, if you want to go through and take take what was mentioned to you, to heart, and and come back with something saying, okay, I have this and this and this, we'll be willing to see you again. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I guess uh, I'll think about it, and uh, I'm gonna. Um, I don't want to have a problem with Bob Bullock if I am cleaning it up and and I, I stopped everything and I didn't I didn't. Uh, um, chip the wood so there's a big wood, wood pile and there's stumps out in the back. I want to be able to clean it up. That much I want to be able to do. Right. I mean, I mean, we can't do anything on his existing order if you, mm -hmm. you know, you can continue the land clearing until we come to a resolution. If he says, yeah, you can get rid of the stumps, but you got to work that out with him. Well, as a, in front of the place, there's a big pile of uh, the well of or your stockpile you, you know yeah. you the take that up with him okay but don't yeah. take it away and all of a sudden park something there <laughs> yeah <laughs> until we're resolved no I'm, I'm not gonna do anything radical so our last goal is to find a way that you can work it here and i think that's pretty consistent okay. We're not trying to find ways to shoot you down. We're trying to find ways to work we don't around you. We want to put you out of business. We don't right. want to do and we that. want to find a way to work around the existing rates. That's not what it's we not do. It's not going to put me out of business. Okay. <laughs> and that's not what we're about. So. But, uh, 
Um, but it might be I'll buy the thing up at the Shire, but then I'm going to run into the same same thing. Got to do this, 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 yeah. this, this. It'll this. be worse up there. Worse. No, oh, believe me. <laughs> then you get into the structures of the paper. Yeah. 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 Clean sheet of paper. Uh, it's the, there. They you have a comment up there. Yes, I know. Yes. I'm going to shut this comment off. from the uh, from the, the public here. Larry. I was just curious. You want to give him the microphone here? Thank you. Sorry to stop. The show. I, uh, I was curious. How did that uh, area on Pond Street where the ball fields are? That has a gravel parking lot. And that's recreational. And it's built yeah. into our regs that we can waive it. And recreational. But, so, I mean, if, if we're concerned about the engines on gravel parking lots, I mean, that's a much denser use than what he's actually using for the last 50 years. I mean, it is, Al, but it's also short-term parking. It's not I mean, right. a vehicle could sit there for perhaps a week or a month or something could be leaking it that's not oh, going to happen on Pond I'm not Street saying it's anybody. exactly the same I'm just oh. if you read our zoning there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of allowances for municipal uses within our zone I'm just looking at it in common sense from a sorry I don't agree with them a spectator here sometimes you see 50 cars sitting on this block for a few hours at a time that's a lot of oil well thank you very much okay thank you thank you I'll, uh, I'll go Chew on it, I guess, and see what I can come up with. All right. It, just get in touch with Betsy. She can put you back on the agenda again. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, we have um, 745. We have uh, Pondville Plaza. Uh, my name is Evan Walmarth. I'm with the Dover Lands Bank Company. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Quay Yeti. Um, we are proposing on constructing approximately an 18,000 square foot two story building at the corner of Pine Street and Valley Street. Um, each floor is going to house approximately four units. Um, and there will be no access from the top floor to the bottom floor. So that it's actually going to be like two separate buildings. Um, there's parking down in the, in the bottom, double, you know, two oh, sets of parking. Um, uh, oh, sorry, that, that's right. We have to call the hearing open, sorry. Uh, <coughs> yes. well, Good thing you brought, you caught that. Yes. Okay, we're going to open the public hearing for Pondville Plaza located at the corner of Pine and Valley Streets. And do you want to read the notice? <coughs> notice is hereby given <coughs> that in accordance with Mass General Law Section 40A and the Norfolk Zoning Bylaw Section F11, <coughs> public hearing will be held on Thursday, June 20th, 2013 at 7.45 p.m. in room 124 of the Norfolk Town Hall, 1 Liberty Lane, Norfolk, Massachusetts, relative to a site plan application for property located at the southeasterly corner of the intersection of Valley and Pine Street in Norfolk, Massachusetts. <clears throat> the applicant, Alan Quaglieri of Walpole, Massachusetts, is proposing construction of a new two-story, 22,000 square foot retail slash food service and medical slash office building with parking and appropriate utilities. The applicant is also requesting special permits for signage and to not require linked parking. See sections F9B1C4 and F9A11 and J6C of the Norfolk Zoning Bylaws, and a stormwater management permit. The property is located in the C1 Zoning District Reference Assessor's Map 25, Block 84, Lots 2. The plan and application are available for public inspection in the Office of the Norfolk Planning Board during regular office hours. Walter Byron, Secretary of the Planning Board. Clerk. Go right ahead. I, I can start again. <laughs> As I say, we're proposing a two-story building. Each floor is going to be only accessed from one side. Um, so the downstairs will be accessed off the uh, Pine Street side, and then there's going to be a roadway going up the hill with parking up top and a single access door in the front, um, which will access the, the four units up on the top floor. Um, Basically, um, 
This is the layout of the parking. Um, uh, it's based on the size of the building and the office use and everything. Uh, we determined there was a requirement of 66 parking spots and uh, we've included seven, I, th I believe it's 73 parking spots provided. So we do have some extra, uh, mainly because we're asking for two special permits for f fast food establishments. Um, and we believe we need the extra parking for those businesses. Um, if you want, I can switch the plan. Betsy, do, do we have a copy here? Can look up? As I said, um, the breakdown of the parking uh, for the building use for the two restaurants it requires 28. Why don't you hold over that one? Betsy's got one. Yeah, just spread that out in front of you there. It requires 28 spots for the two food services, 12 for the two retail, which we're not sure whether they're going on the top floor or the ground floor, but we were presuming that the takeout would probably be on the lower level. Already access the pines. On the second floor, we, we assume that that is going to be strictly offices, either general office or medical office, and uh, combined parking spaces is 28. And then in in the back of the property, we're going to put in a site office, which is going to be the, the general management of the property. Uh, it will just be one office with some room for storage of files and a bathroom. Um, and that requires two parking spots. So can see, Sorry. I, I can say, I can say, but I'm as I say, we we are providing 73 parking spots plus the three required handicaps spots, which are all van accessible. Um, but basically, it's a 24-foot wide roadway going all the way up and through with parking on both sides. And again, it's 24 feet wide with parking on both sides. We have split up the parking into sections of either anywhere from five to seven spaces with landscape islands in between so as to break up the parking and provide more landscaping. Um, there will be a patio off the side of the building, which we presume that is going to be one of the restaurants, so there could be some outside seating. Um, and otherwise, um, that takes care of the parking and the building layout. As I said, the, the entire property is in the C1 district. However, they're not happy. There is two C1 districts. One's on highway, one's off, yeah. off highway. <coughs> but the line that designates that is so far back on the property, yes. it's in an area we're, we're barely even going to touch as far as disturbance. Um, there was an issue brought up in one of the comments concerning the Aquifer Protection District. Um, let me just get that plan. Yeah, but what's the scale on this? 30.
this is the plan of the existing site conditions. Um, currently, the property uh, with the Pine Street reconstruction is fairly level out in the front, back to the um, the highway line, the no, property line. Um, it's fairly open on area. The, these trees down in the front were trees planted by the state. They were all interspersed with some shrubbery that you know, I did not show on this plan. And there's a heavy wood line that goes across the front and up the side with an existing house next door. Um, and otherwise, it's a heavily wooded lot all the way in, except for this one little swale that runs up the middle that actually appears to be an old cart road, which is free and clear of any trees. Um, there is a lot that's part of the property at number 2 Hill Street. Um, that lot, again, is heavily wooded, and the back portion of number 2 worse. Hill Street is also heavily wooded. Um, I thought it was much as far no. as the aquifer protection I went over, I went by this. line based on the uh, mass DEP maps the line runs basically right through the front of the property on a diagonal mm -hmm. so there's approximately about 70 feet on this end down to nothing on the other end now there, there was a question on one of the comments from PSC concerning lot coverage because <coughs> we're in the Two, you know, we are we are in the uh, aquifer zone two district in the front. However, in investigating with Mr. Bullock this morning, um, that re the regulation applies, I believe, to any uh, groundwater aquifer that is for the Norfolk water supply. This entire aquifer protection area is for the well that is on the state property down off of 1A. So therefore, he made a decision that the uh, medical center right next door is not uh, liable for the property, the lot coverage. Right. No so requirement of Not only for that, but I think there was a previous ruling also for the car wash yep. for that reason. Yes. Now we are we are proposing um, as far as the utilities. Right now, currently, there's a 12-inch water main running down on the opposite side of Pine Street. And when they did that reconstruction of the road, they fed off a 6-inch water stub basically back to about this point in the negotiations, I believe, with the medical office building. They're proposing to extend that 6-inch main down. Um, what we're proposing on doing is tapping in with a six inch line for fire protection to come up and feed in to the a hydrant gate on the side of the building for the sprinkler system. Uh, the other utilities are, there currently is a gas line that runs right in the berm, right along the edge of the road. We're gonna tap into that and bring it up and have the gas meters underneath the walkway um, in the back of the building so it's basically hidden from public view. As far as water and electrical to the structures, there's an existing, I believe, a two-inch line that currently crosses Pine Street with a, and there's an existing water gate on our property that was left when they re did the reconstruction. We're just going to extend it up into the building. There'll be a meter room on the inside of the building on the lower level. Um, and I don't have it on this plan, but that water line is also supposed to extend up into the uh, site office building in the back because there will be a bathroom in that. 
Um, all the electrical will come off the existing pole underground to a transformer pad and then cut across and tie into the building um, where the, all the meters will be in underneath this, this walkway, which is the emergency e exit for the second floor. Um, there's the air conditioning units for the entire building will be placed right in that same area, which is actually set lower than the grade around it. There's a retaining wall anywhere from, you know, two feet up to six feet high. So the air conditioning units will be down in that hollow. Plus the wall that's going to be there protecting it is also going to be shielded by uh, arborvitae sc screening. Um, as far as the septic system, there's going to be two septic systems, one for the lower floor, one for the upper floor, and the site office. Both septic systems are capable of handling just under 2,000 gallons a day. And any of the parts of the septic system that are lie with underneath any of the pavement will be rated for H20 loading. Um, as far as the drainage, the parking lot in the backs as far as the grading splits, the majority of the lot slopes down and feeds into one basin here. The rest of it slopes out into this roadway and runs down, being split by the road into two basins down here. The rest of the property feeds down into this lot and it all feeds over to another catch basin here, which is actually a, a storm septic unit to handle uh, the water quality standards of the town. Uh, all these, these three basins feed into a larger storm septa, which then goes into a galley system, which is underneath the pavement, uh, which is capable of holding the 100-year storm. You know, the rest of the prop, the the other two plans are on the sheets are basically the landscape plan and the lighting plan. Um, May as well show us. You do it. Those are the plan that's Has the design review board seen um, these plans yet? Basically, out in the front, there's some trees and shrubbery that are lay out in this uh, Pine Street layout. Those we those are not allowed to remove without town permission. We're not asking for it. However, basically the the majority of all the trees on the entire site are going to end up being removed, either through because of grading issues, utility issues, or parking, or the building. Um, we're trying to maintain as much as we can down in the front. Um, we have interspersed trees and shrubbery in a, within the 20-foot landscape setback area on both sides. We've got... Um, rows of arborvitaes as a screening for the house next door and we also have them on the uh, low side over in this area of the retaining walls. There's a retaining wall in here which holds back the property next door. Um, the reason we have these in place is we are proposing uh, modular block concrete walls and we're just going to, you know, they're going to be the stone cut face walls, and we're, but we're going to put a row of our arborvitaes up to block the face of them, to hide them. Um, on the wall that's going to go off the back of the building around and retain the area for the parking, the upper level parking and the septic system, again, that's going to be stone, the stone cut face. You know, modular block will have that faced off with some arborvitae on this side because this is residential land. Um, in the back, 
There's two industrial buildings out in the back. That's all part of uh, four lots that is owned by a person, but there is no residential houses in back, so we're leaving that uh, just the plain stone face. This section of the retaining wall, which is approximately about five and a half to six feet high, is all going to be stone veneered face because that's going to be able to be seen by everybody on the patio, people parking, and it might even parts of it, you know, during the uh, <coughs> winter months would be seen through the trees. Um, as far as the uh, lighting, well, how high are these walls? Uh, you know, like it, because uh, it looks to me as though you're going to have to lower quite a bit, don't you? You're going to have to take a lot of uh, fill out of there, aren't you? Well, th in the in the back area, there's going to be quite a bit of fill coming out of here, but on this side, um, this area. The, the grade in this area is going to be going up five to six feet. Oh. And the same thing with the building. The building, basically, the, it's split right down the middle. The, f the back half is going to be some fill, and the front half is going to be a cut situation. And this entire parking lot, this entire parking lot is basically going to be filled it up with a lot of this parking lot in here is going to be cut into the hill. So it's basically a 50-50 split on the amount of cut and fill on the entire site. I'd have to take a look at this because I'm just imagining a slope like this yeah. when I drive by yeah, it. So that's so. all I know. <laughs> well, so. right now, from the, from the street up to this back <coughs> corner, there's almost 30 feet yeah. in difference in elevation. But this, this entire back corner, we're not changing any of the grading. We're going to leave all the trees and everything as natural as we can. So these, stones, these stone walls aren't going to be higher than four feet, right? Um, actually, they're going, to, they're going to be upwards. The majority of them are going to be anywhere from three to six feet. You know, the worst case scenario is this wall in here by the loading zone hits a maximum, I think, of seven and a half. And do you have a, f a fence that's designed for? Uh, yeah, there's going to be a fence. Yeah, that's there's going to be a fence along the wall anywhere where the wall's over four feet. The uh, building code that's requires there be a yeah, fence. Non-climbable, supposedly. That's. And for the lighting. It's going to consist of about 11, I believe, 11 or 12 overhead lights lighting up the parking areas around the perimeter. The building itself, there's a six foot overhand canopy just like at Rocco Plaza, one down below, one up above. That whole area is going to be all underlit, so there will be some spillage from the building out into the parking areas up along the building. But basically all the lighting is designed so there's no more than a, oh, this is the a quarter candle foot crossing the line. Actually, it's down, down to about a tenth of a candle foot. Um, the one area where there is uh, some spillage what appears to be some spillage there actually isn't because of the landscaping with the Arborvitae hedge. Um, but so and then there'll be the uh, access lights over the doorways on the on the side. The, the two doors up above, and there's also a door down below on each side. You know, those will have the standard just. Um, direct light so so the main entrances are for the first floor over on the right or is right here oh okay so oh so you were saying the doors on the uh, on the right and left there those are, are those, those, those are the are, emergency those ones are the emergency oh, okay. doors I'll show you the building plan in just a minute <clears throat> and the main entrance in the top is again right in the middle uh, so let me go to the building the, plan. The, before you do the, the one light the, the the first one up on the right there after you go 
Yeah, that fella, that fella. Yeah. That's the one that's closest to the house next door, right? Yep. But there's, there's going to be a uh, row of arborvitaes, basically from here all the way back up to yeah. the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, have to plus, push plus the lights are specified that they're you know, a uh, sharp cut off, you know, so there's no spillage back of the light. Hmm. Evan, going uh, east, I guess. Mary Gold, four six eight to ten Hill Street. Yeah. Is that that yellow building in back there? Is that one of us's property? Yeah. What is that? It's it's like a commercial way. building. It's there's actually two commercial buildings back. There. Right. There's one lower and there's one two level. Yeah. And that's what abuts the rear of that. Yeah. Okay. Ask the mayor of Pondville. She's here tonight. <laughs> 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 this is maybe an idea of the building. Again, as I say, this is similar, very similar to Rocco Plaza, except it's a reverse situation. Rocco Plaza, there's a single entrance on the front, and on the back side, it's two stories. In this case, it's going to be, you know, the, the lower level with only the primary access is off the front of the building. And then when you drive up and around, there'll be a main entrance, and then there'll be four offices um, set off a common hallway running the entire, you know, width of the building. And as I said, um, this, this is the view from the side where the roadway's going up. So there will be the canopy over the walk that runs across the entire front of the building. Then it'll come back. This will be an emergency exit. All the electrical meters and everything will be in here with the air conditioning units. And then there'll be the retaining wall. And this wall comes out and goes this way, back down towards the street. So as that's far that as- That's seven foot wall. That, that's that one that no, drops out at seven feet. Actually, this wall is um, when it starts approximately to about okay. six feet high. Just further up to the right. From there, it's it reaches yeah, on the seven. other side of the roadway where the loading area is. That's where it oh, goes up to the seven half foot wall. Okay. Um, and as I said, these two doors are strictly for emergency access because you have to have two um, two doorways in every unit. Um, so we've got got them coming in off of the common up above, off the common hallway, down the middle, and then there's emergency access. Through, which goes to a walkway which feeds down to the retaining wall on both sides of the building. With a double loaded car upstairs? It's going to be a 20, I believe it's 20 foot, foot wide Cor corridor that Cor goes Cor with two offices on one side, two offices on the other, and at the end of the corridor is going to be common bathrooms for all four offices. But your two, your two emergency uh, egress at the ends are those within the units themselves? Yes. Okay. So the corridor doesn't reach all the way to the end of the building? Then. No, it doesn't. Okay. And as I said, on the office building, it's, it's a small 20 by 40 foot building. There'll be a file room, a bathroom, and then the general office area. And that's for the, you know, the site manager. All right. So we're going to hear from our consultants and uh, 
We'll start with Gino because he'll go a little quicker. <laughs> 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 Um, comment number two regarding the parking I just noted that the their calculation is based on 80% of the gross square footage being possible, and just noting that that would need to be confirmed by building commissioner and based on the the actual build out plans um, the, the the row of evergreens on the uh, the side that faces the existing house does not go all the way down to the street. Uh, it does go as far as the location of the house. So there, there's existing woods that would be remaining, perhaps, though as I noticed that Tom noted that the electrical line is shown going through through those existing woods. So maybe that, that might need to be moved a little bit to preserve the, the wooded area. Uh, there is a request to waive the linked parking requirement, um, and I just note that the uh, there's a good opportunity to connect to the adjacent undeveloped property right now, either with uh, uh, as a vehicular connection, considering there's only one entrance in and out, uh, or at a minimum a pedestrian connection, like has been done in the other couple of other projects. Gino, can you stop right there? Yeah. This land court uh, lot here. Yep. What's there? Um, basically just woods. Nothing. And yeah. that's what you're referring to linking to that. Well, for, for, for make provisions for a future link is what I what I had in mind. I mean that lot is actually combined indeed with the house at number two Hill Street. It's all. Is that the older boarded up house? No. no. On the corner. This one back here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, because the older one is on the other side of Hill Street. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Yeah, so technically that, that is a residential lot next door, even though it's in the commercial district. You know, there is a residential house on it. It's on just at the land court lot. The land court okay. lot is vacant, but it's part of the parcel owned by... Um, <coughs> Number two Hill Street. Okay. Um, a, a sign permit has also been applied for, and uh, the sign being proposed is very similar to other signs that multi multi tenant signs that have been proposed. It's less than 100 square feet. One one is designed to be not quite 24 square feet, which is allowed by special permit. So that. It pretty much complies with the requirements. Was there sign details in here? Yes. Uh, there's a waiver request for the sidewalk in, in front of the property. Uh, most of the property has a sidewalk along Pine Street. On Valley Street, there's a short stretch that does not have a, uh, a short, short stretch of the front of the lot that is not proposed to have a sidewalk. It's not very long, and given the discussion on the Pine Street Medical Center um, that there should be a sidewalk on that side of the street, uh, I just suggest that that little link should be in place so that it would be a continuous sidewalk at, in the future. Right. Yeah, you should have expected that Can to I come up. Can I address that for one minute? The reason it's <laughs> not there is, uh, let me just show you. As I, as I was talking about the land court lot, the actual sideline for Pine Street, when a part of Valley Street was abandoned and combined with Pine Street, is set back in here, and then there's a tie, and then from here over is Valley Street. Valley Street, according to all the ancient plans, is considered what they call a two-rod road. It's 33 feet wide. Um, it's a very... Some plants call it a variable width, but the land court recognizes it as a 33-foot wide road. 
However, this piece of land court property extends out beyond this line here to the point that it is actually out into the pavement that they just redid in the rebuilding. In fact, the curbing that comes around this corner and out goes into the land court and the utility pole is in the land court. So even if we were to extend the sidewalk around here, unless this gentleman decides to give the town some land, the sidewalk cannot be extended through his property without a taking by the town. We'll worry about that when the time comes. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with it piecemeal. That's, that's how we're going to get it done. <coughs> okay. Okay, that, that's pretty much it. The la last, last comment I had uh, concerned the, the trees out front. And um, I did not realize that those trees out front were a part of the already planted as part of the road yeah. project. Yeah, yeah, that was just, that was part of the reconstruction yeah. project, Pine Street. And uh, I believe with the proposed walk I've got coming down to tie into this handicap ramp, I think one tree has to be relocated. Otherwise, all those trees will remain. Okay. Can we, before we close with Chino's comments, I'd like to talk about the sidewalk here for a minute. In the event, because we, you know, specifically pushed the sidewalk over, we walked through the medical office building parking lot. This is clearly was designed, you know, to connect with the existing parking lot at the medical office building along 115 that's in place. Rather than requiring this sidewalk to know where the 80 or whatever so feet that are there is there any way that we could condition it when they do have the condition um connection rather than putting it in now i mean it's something once it's think built and everything's done it's really hard to go back unless they bond it and we just hold on to the money but you know better off just having it done because you know as this road gets developed we, we can't go without any sidewalk on that roadway Got to get it on. You have to have it on one side or the other. I mean, I understand that, but you know, this, I know, this piece yep. here, trying to take a piece, especially land court piece, if they dig in their heels, good luck. I've been tied up in a court case for two well, years now. So, Peter, what are you saying? You'd go as far as where the well, where the walkway, um, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the that they they took the care to uh, like make the connection so there's a consistent walkway across, but. Um, you know, are we going to build this for no reason right now? <clears throat> Maybe we can condition it. Maybe we can bond it. But why require it if this could be never there? It, they may want to develop it for commercial property. If this is successful, they may decide to do mm -hmm. it. You, you never know. I, I like the idea of, of somehow trying to condition it because the sidewalk to nowhere just seems like another silly thing that they could do with the sidewalk to nowhere. But well, I, how do I you like condition it. them to do it after they're gone? I mean, how much? What, what, what's a sidewalk per foot? And that's the other thing. It's such a small amount. I mean, sort of mixed feelings about it. It's such a small amount of sidewalk. Do you just do it now since you have everything out there? You're mobilized. You're building a sidewalk anyway. We're not making a decision on it tonight. Yeah, but no, it's just no. I want to throw that out thought. there. Food for thought. Yeah. It's just that there was a long I conversation about the sidewalks, and it was decided, and there's several people in this room <laughs> who are part of the whole issue of pushing the sidewalk onto the other side of the street. Yeah. It seems like you hold it against me at this point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Try to hold you to it, not against it. Hold you to it, it yeah. To it, not against well, it. Well, I just really think there should be a master plan. Know, well, there that's was a sidewalk plan. I'm just not sure exactly which encourage. side. This uh, yeah. it probably had sidewalks on both sides of the street on the sidewalk but plan. But, but that's exactly what we're trying to encourage: is a master plan and trying to push it in that direction as much as we can. And in the past, we haven't, you know, forced sidewalks recently down people's throats trying to put projects up. I'm not trying to force anything down anyone's throats. Just some food for thought. Okay, that's fair. Let's see it open as a discussion item going forward. No, Tom, do you have some comments some also? Uh, I, I do, and I'm going to try to redeem myself uh, yet, by going through the. I'm only kidding, Tom. <laughs> 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 now, honestly, I think a uh, the plan I think is in good shape. The 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 
comments, although there are several, they're pretty utilitarian in yeah. nature. I don't, yeah. don't see any site stop, uh, any showstoppers uh, here. Uh, comment number one, we're looking for the plan that locates the uh, prior uh, soil borings that were taken on the property. Comment number two, we don't think the dumpster is located such that uh, pickup is convenient. The truck has to do quite a bit of uh, backing up. Comment number three, the top uh, of the infiltration system, the elevation is 198. That should be lowered if possible about a foot so that it uh, gets it down out of the pavement section and you don't see uh, cracks and things reflecting up through the um, uh, through the pavement. Um, comment uh, number eight is looking for some additional detail on the uh, fire protection system. Uh, comment ten, we're looking for pressure and flow information on the water distribution system. Uh, that, may I ask something? That that's for the existing twelve-inch main in Pine Street. Yeah, you're yeah. requiring us to do yeah. a water study of it. We're we're requiring you to tell us the pressure and flow in that. Was Didn't we see a separate uh, comment coming out of DPW earlier today? Did we get copied on some emails on that? Yeah, it's included in your packet. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't anything about a study on it except it's for not, the not size a study, of the just valve. Just if a measurement. You, yeah. Right. If you contact the DPW, they probably have the information. If not, you can have it done for two or three hundred dollars. So it's you'll need it anyway for your fire protection system in the building. So yeah. it's just Okay. When you do, do we have um, do we have current pressure that might have been very timely for the medical office building recently? Uh, maybe I, I didn't cross check that. It might be something that's readily available. Yeah. Um, comment thirteen: uh, the architectural plan indicates the building on the the door on the side of the building. You discussed that, Evan. So uh, I think that door needs either a landing or a sidewalk. Yeah. Um, Comment 15, we discussed the sidewalk. Comment 16, pipe materials aren't shown on the drawings. Comment 18, the driveway is relatively steep, around 6.5%. So we're looking for a, a leveling area at the street. Um, comment 19 is looking for some additional detail on the curbing installation. Uh, comment 20, uh, yeah, Mass DOT's requirements for curb radii are a little bit smaller than the 30 foot you've got there. I don't know. It's 30 feet. It's 30 feet for commercial. Is it real? Uh, yeah, because okay. Okay. we applied we applied for the state uh, curb cut for Leo's Landing, and I had 20, I believe 26 they foot 30, curb okay. radius, and they want us to change it to 30. Yeah. I'm not sure whether MassDOT has jurisdiction over that roadway. They might through a traffic uh, control agreement. One fifteen is a county layout, so they, they might through a traffic control agreement because they paid for the work there. So I, I, I don't. But if it's thirty feet, it's thirty feet. That's uh, that's fine. Um, Twenty one. A s portion of the driveway sheds stormwater into Pine Street, so it's something the board would have to allow, which I think. It's a reasonable amount of flow, but you have to ask to do that, and I would suggest that you uh, discuss that with the DPW to see if they have any uh, concerns about that. Uh, comment 22 and 23, we're looking for seasonal uh, high uh, groundwater elevations in the footprint of the stormwater basin, and just a note that it's closer than uh, 100 feet to Pine Street, so there'd be a waiver required for that setback. Comment number 24, uh, this is just a bit of a concern about the noise from the mechanical equipment due to the proximity of the residents. I think the, the simple solution, maybe we could condition it. Uh, most of the mechanical equipment you buy they can tell you what the decibel coming out of it is. So 
uh, it may be below required standards or you may have to put some additional opaque fencing there or whatever you <coughs> described is kind of down in a hole but uh, we, we need a little more information to put that that issue aside uh, 25 is a, a requested waiver of the uh, traffic study uh, comment 29 is a, some requesting some detail on curbing installation comment 30 snow storage areas should be indicated comment 32 uh, we thought, and maybe we have the same impression everybody does, that there'd be a lot more earthworks. We asked you to check that. Maybe it's because, as you explained tonight, it's more balanced than you think, but we, we did ask you to verify those uh, earthwork quantities. Um, 33, uh, the retaining walls aren't uh, hugely high, but they are over uh, four feet, so there is a... Uh, waiver required of eight of section eight five five uh comment uh 35 again this is noise related concerns for the mechanical equipment um comment 37 uh we incorrectly assumed this 15 percent impervious issue uh, you indicated that mr bullock had clarified that um issue uh, 38, just a special permit for parking in the front yard. Uh, comment 39, uh, technically there are two loading spaces required for the building, and one is shown. Uh, comment 40, there are uh, special permits required for oversized signs, and we suggested a detail of that be added. Uh, comment 42, uh, the driveway uh, doesn't technically meet the 100 foot setback from the driveways across the street, but our opinion would be that the driveway is an appropriate location, uh, so although it doesn't conform to the 100 feet, uh, I would not recommend changing the, um, changing the site plan. And I think Gino mentioned these two that things, 43 and 44. The Say that uh, again, Tom. I'm sorry. What number? Uh, a comment uh, uh, 42, uh, Peter. The the, the um, setback, uh, the offset to the driveway across the street is 84 feet instead of 100 feet. It looks on this plan as if it's directly across. No, he means, they are, they, he means, he's he's he talking about the car wash. Right? Yeah, okay. which you guys right. approved that's by yeah. right. Yeah, that's think, across from the right. The car and wash. I think uh, um, a lot of that got uh, thrown into. <laughs> disarray because of what happened exactly yeah. do north but the long and short of it is we believe the driveway is in the correct location uh comment 43 and 44 i think uh, uh gino mentioned these the required special permits with respect to, excuse me the special permit for the takeout restaurants and relief from the um, linked parking so Again, several comments, but I think they're sort of utilitarian nature. I think the plan's in good shape. Tom, um, Bob McGee had just presented a memo today. It's in the packet where he's bringing up the um, catch basins. You Did you guys get those? Making I just got them this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody's noting that the parking area is designed with just four single great catch basins, and he has concern that runoff will travel a great distance and collect a larger amount of water, especially at the driveway entrance, than single catch basins can handle. So can you look into that in your next mm -hmm. round? Sure. I, uh, What's that? Before I came over tonight, I did a, I did a quick uh, check, and the uh, catch basin grates that are specified are uh, designed to handle two, two and a half cubic feet per second of inflow. And if you go through my drainage report, um, the... The three major catch basins, uh, actually, only on a hundred-year storm, have a maximum inflow of 1.3 cubic feet per second. The only one that is higher than that is the uh, catch basin that ends, is down in the bottom, which is a storm septic unit. And on the hundred-year storm, that hit, hits a <coughs> inflow of 2.2 cubic feet per second. So. The inflow is 
uh, rated below what the uh, catch basin grade is designed for. So I, I read part of his comment being that the capacity, but also being the distances and and few well, I mean, number of them to how much it has to travel across the, yeah. the site. Well, on a typical street, it's the pavement's 24 feet wide and catch basins are 300 feet apart. In this situation, the roadway's 24 feet wide and the catch basins are 150 feet apart. So it's catching less than what a regular street would carry. So if the, if the streets in North Fork can handle them, then this parking lot should You know what, can you at least quantify that and make a, a memo back to Bob on it? Yep. Because he probably just wants to be careful. Yep. Do, you, do you have a response to that? Also, the uh, the comment, the, the, the discrepancy between the, the two calculations on the distance between the uh, the drain, the uh, catch basins. Is there a I discrepancy of calculations, or yeah, I, I, I think didn't Bob see just raised a, a sort of a qualitative type of concern that the the catch basins might be too far apart. You might be getting too much. It's not really gutter flow, but flow along the low point in the uh, in the. Uh, parking lot so we, we can take a look at that I mean it's, it sounds like Evan has already evaluated it but we'll uh, I, I can call Bob and make sure he's comfortable with the uh, with the design or maybe we can modify it in some way but uh, and I think if you qualify quantify it for him yep. I mean the the numbers that Evan quoted are realistic I mean you can probably get about two CFS through a catch base and depending on how open it is and he's well below that under the hundred year storm doesn't sound like it's a problem but uh, so sometimes there are concerns that aren't reflected in the words of the comments we'll, we'll, we'll check with Bob and make keep sure them clean we'll, well we're going to have questions from the board now would you like to start Michelle um, I was actually interested to see if anyone had any comments well so let's get them from okay. the board before we open it up to no, the general I'm, public I'm okay right now. you're all set mm -hmm. Peter do you have any questions yes I so far, I, it looks fine other than the one that we uh, brought up about the sidewalk that we discussed with. So. All right. Greg, did you have any? Uh, not this time. <coughs> Moving right along. Uh, when you first talked about the, uh, the existing, you said there's an existing water line, two-inch water line, did you say? On the right-hand um, side. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right now in Pine Street is an existing 12-inch man. When they did the reconstruction, they left yeah. two-inch, I believe, two-inch lines feeding in every lot, vacant lot down Pine Street. So we already have a water service, with the potable water in the building, um, with a water gate on our property, which we're just going to tap into and feed up into the building. That's to the right of the driveway. When you mentioned two inch, I was just uh, wondering whether that was sufficient. And in fact, you know, after reading Bob McGee's uh, memorandum, he's asked the same question. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a fairly substantial um, he's project. So. He's got six inch coming in on the other side. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to be tying into that, but that's for the fire suppression system. Is that it, Jeff? Yeah. I mean, two inches is pretty big for right I mean that that's what we have at Rocco Plaza that's what we've got at Leo's landing Luca Plaza Walter do you have any questions yeah I do uh, my concern has to do with the traffic you've asked for a waiver on a traffic study yes the uh, the area down there is uh, fortunately being developed and uh, we have Rocco Plaza in place we have four kicks the fence company Joffrand uh, and now the car wash and the medical office building and then this office building. So uh, there, there's a lot of traffic in the area and I think this is just going to add to it and so be it. But nevertheless, uh, th there is a significant traffic load in that area. Uh, right at the intersection there, there's a lot of businesses. So uh, I'm not sure that we should waive the traffic study. We really ought to understand how much flow is going to go in and out of these businesses. That's a concern I have. Secondly, <clears throat> I may be the only one, including the fire chief, who's concerned about this, but there's only one access to this piece of property. And uh, 
although it would it would create a significant uh, design change to do so one could conceive consider putting a road down from the end of that upper level down the side of the property uh, out to Valley Street as a possible second uh, access to the building. It's not an overriding concern and certainly didn't appear to be a concern <coughs> of the fire chief. Nevertheless, it's an issue I'd, I'd like to at least put on the table. <coughs> well, the fire chief generally likes to have access to the entire building and he, there, there is access on three sides. So there's only one short side that, that doesn't have direct but Bob McGee had the same concern with traffic. Yeah, yeah. It's in his letter. If you're, if you're saying the width of the building and bring a roadway right oh, in here. No, I think, I think the building, if you look at the layout, you could probably squeeze a road down that... Uh, down the other side of the, of the building. That would cook. They'd, then we'd have no place for any of the utilities on that side of the building. We'd have, uh, be eliminating the patio area yes. for the potential restaurant. Yep. We've got grading issues with the property yep. next door. And we'd be dumping out a roadway within 30 feet of the major intersection. Yes. That's, that would be more of a traffic hazard than anything else. Well. And as far as the layout of this building, it's very similar to Rocco Plaza, one entrance in, one entrance out, and with parking wrapping both the front and the back of the building, <coughs> and the fire chief had no issues true, with that. True, but this, that isn't at the intersection of Valley Street and Pine Street, you know. Uh, you know, to try and direct traffic directly into that intersection would be extremely dangerous, and I believe Tom would. Well, agree. it wouldn't be a, a permanent road. I mean, I don't know if you realize it, but this this building has a a, a road on the, the side, another driveway on the other side also that is accessed from the parking lot for fire. Uh, but it's got grass growing on it now. It was planned that way, but I mean, it can be done. I, I I'm not recommending it because I think that fire can reach all the way around this building. I mean, four kicks, I think, uh, has only access from two sides. Yes. But the, what was I going to ask for? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The 2% uh, the, the grade that you're talking about at the bottom of the driveway, how long does that have to be, the uh, two car lengths, or generally? Well, I, I you know, it to the extent is. that it incorporates the subdivision regs, I think it's 50 feet, but, you know, and, you could probably, I mean, the most critical thing is the first car, so I guess you could probably shorten it to 30 feet, but 30 or 50, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Are you going to be able to do that, to get a 2% slope at the base? I mean, it happens all over the place. Will we mandate a 2% grade at the bottom? I may have to, in doing, doing that, I, I mean, if I could drop, this, drop the drainage system a, a foot to accommodate the pavement he's talking about his recommendation I can probably pitch it in at two percent and then go up at ten Ooh. you know to try and match the grading going up because it's basically a six percent six six and a half percent slope all the way up to the back parking mm -hmm. lot that's a really high side but that's a tough place to be coming down a six percent slope straight onto uh, the, onto a highway with with no in no two percent at the bottom. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the winter time, somebody slides down. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good point. We have to. But we've got a office building right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 now, now the th the thirty foot radius that you have on the dr on the on the. Driveway. Injury that, injury now, building. that's a, that's a, a larger radius than what is generally requested <coughs> for these buildings. Is that right? We usually request a 24. Is that right? Well, that's normally what 26. Yeah. The, 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 he, the mass DOT spec for commercial buildings is 20 is 30. Oh. Because we just we applied for this mass highway permit for 
uh, Leo's Landing, and we had 26, and they're making us change it to 30. No. No. I'd, l I'd like to hear I mean, from Bob on that yeah, also. For a residential because... driveway, it's as low as 22 foot in some cases. Because I know that there's some discrepancy, like the, at, at – um, I know that at the fence company, the, it, it's probably not 30 at the fence yeah. company. Right? Well, the, the thing is, this is not a state – it's a numbered state highway, but it's a county layout. The county has control of it. If you want a reduction in the radius to, say, 24, that can be done. It's your discretion what you want. I, I tried to comply with the state highway requirement for commercial business. The, the range of things is probably 20, 25, and 30. And the, there's like countervailing design principles. As the radii get smaller, what you're doing is you're minimizing the exposure for pedestrians walking along the sidewalk because it's not quite so big an open area. If you went below 20, then you start to get into problems impeding truck turns. So mm -hmm. I don't think this building is going to have a whole bunch of trucks. So I might err on the side of having a small radii, but I think you need to check with Bob Bullet uh, with uh, uh, with Bob McGee and find out what restrictions, if any, are imposed by a traffic control agreement over this section of the roadway. I mean that's. Mass Highway does them typically when they participate in funding, and I don't know what the requirements are. Well, you said that you were going to talk to Bob about the storm drains yeah, I'll, anyway. Yeah, I'll talk to him about Could that. Could you talk sure. to him about yeah. that and yeah. also the leveling at the 2% at, at the grade? I, I think you the, somehow have to be leveled. I mean, that, that's... Yeah. All right. um, one other thing, uh, uh, Walter and Tom, I'd like you to chime in on this. You know, we've traditionally waived, in most cases, the traffic study because, to use your own words, from a past site plan review, you know, the, the value is suspect because it's a snapshot, okay? And a lot of the concerns, although well-founded on uh, by Walter right now, these places aren't built yet. So they wouldn't give us an accurate portrayal of what's going on. It'd be all suspect. Well, you can quantify it. The common thing to do in terms of no-build conditions is have just a percent for background traffic, but then you add in what are called specific generator projects, which are approved projects near the site. And what you'll frequently see is that the traffic engineer will take the trip generation from each of those projects and simply overlay it on what's there. So you can quantify it. The, the, the um, only issue is in this type of situation uh, is how beneficial is the information. In other words, um, none of the driveways, and, and I'm sure Valley Street, is not going to meet the warrants for signalization. So you can't put a traffic signal in. You're probably going to have stop control on all the driveways and stop control on Valley Street anyway. So if you do a traffic study, you can find out what kind of a problem you have in terms of delayed a project users getting out, which is really what it is. The, the theory of stop sign controlled intersections is that the main street traffic is not impeded at all. It's a delay by the side street or the driveway, the case, waiting for a gap of sufficient dimensions in the traffic stream to pull out safely. It's called gap acceptance. So you can calc what the delay is for a driveway or for Valley Street, but having calced it, that's about it. You know, I mean, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't lead you to anything productive that you wouldn't otherwise do. You'd put stop signs in, you'd put stop lines. Having the information that the project users are going to be delayed while that is maybe good to know it doesn't it doesn't terribly much help you in any but there are a few things to consider that are unique to each um, entrance onto a roadway such as sight distance right so there has to be good sight distance here and also 
the anticipated speed of you know vehicles in this case coming from Route One, which yeah, I'm not saying that it, any of those rise to the level of yeah, concern. Yeah, I mean, the, you, you can scope a traffic study to address anything, a and um, intersection site distance. Although my, pers I didn't go out and field measure it, but my perception is it's pretty decent here. What you could do. Uh, is put down an ATR, an automatic traffic recorder, and it, it, they'll do it for about 300 bucks. And that'll give you a speed of the vehicles. Uh, part of the output you get is the 85th percentile speed, and the 85th percentile speed, uh, you should have s site distance, stopping site distance, and intersection site distance to accommodate the 85th percentile speed. So if, if you have the speed, you can measure what the site distance should be. And then for intersection <coughs> site distance, you go out in the field and you measure the height of the car. If it's stopping site distance, you measure a two-foot bumper and you can calc whether or not you have the site distance. So that might be an aspect of a traffic study which would be helpful in this situation. So I mean, that site is... is Clear for site distance as you can get. That's my perception. But I mean, you, you, I don't you think that should be on the table. That's, yeah. you know. <coughs> well, you certainly know that <coughs> coming down the hill from Route 1, uh, the speed is pretty high. No uh, doubt. Pretty high. Right. Um, but that's not something that, um, I mean, short of us, you know, putting the stop signs in that we require even on any basic site. <coughs> If Tom doesn't think it reaches the level of signalization, which I don't think it would. It has to be 150 cars an hour for eight hours of the day. Not going to happen. Well, I know that the general speed going down that hill is approximately, no, only because I catch myself all the time. <laughs> and I'm You're in, driving all over. I'm in, I'm in traffic. That's Steve, why I know. And, it's, and, and generally <laughs> speaking, the traffic goes between 40 and 45 miles an hour down that hill. And I try to catch myself all the time because I know that someone's hiding in the Joffran <laughs> driveway. So I, I try to make sure I go. You don't have any sight distance. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I try to catch myself, but I always look down and look at my speed, and it's always somewhere between 40 and 45 miles an hour, just because of the hill. Right. Once they took out that real road, yeah. things definitely spit them. All right. I, are we done here with the board? With the board, or do you, I'm going to open it up to the the, the public. All Did set. Did you have a uh, comment though? Are you trying to get in there? Did the applicant? No. no I'm good. Oh. Oh. Okay. Did uh, okay. I'm, uh, are there any comments from the uh, or questions from the, the the public? And if so, could you please identify yourself? Okay. Al, can you give her a Elizabeth Whitney, 26 Valley Street, Pondville. Um, Pondville Plaza looks good to me so far. And I think the second driveway, I agree with Evan that that seems like it would be really uh, problematic. I hope, and this is my opinion, I hope that we don't get hung up on the sidewalk. It's my opinion. I hope that the project can move forward without getting stuck on that. I really do, in any way possible. There's no getting stuck. It's My choice of words. It's either it's in there or is yep, it is. But I just hope that we, uh, quite frankly, I just don't see that it's necessary. I know that area well. I pick trash up there all the time. The sidewalk that is existing on the conceptual plan looks looks sufficient um, and I know that we're thinking future but we're thinking right now and so I'm just hoping that that sidewalk issue will just be put to rest for a while um, I think things look pretty good thank you anybody else? is there anybody else oh it's not do we want to continue When would you like to continue to? Can you just summarize that the issues that you guys would like to see addressed? Oh, that's yours. 
The Bob McGee issue with the, uh, the catch basin covers, or grates, whatever you call it. Obviously, the 2% because of the 6% uh, grade on to 115. Uh, the radii on the driveway. The You'd like to see that decrease? Uh, check with Bob. Yeah, see, see what, what Bob prefers. Because a, a lot of what is in the, the <coughs> designs that are down there now were from Butch. I don't know if Bob is going to be the same with the, the construction details as Butch was. Can we th think about this logically, though? We're dealing with, say, that 45 downgrade, uh, okay, 45 miles an hour de downgrade. I think the lack of pedestrians, therefore the wider mouth that you're worried about, is less of a concern than someone having to pull a lot tighter and stop. Because the wider that you can actually pull off 115, Better. all right, is the less time that you could potentially have a down gradient rear end or axis. I'm only concerned that the, the highway department has input into it. That's all. Okay. I don't have an. I don't have any judgment whatsoever on a 24 or a 30. The, the comment is in here, and I just want Bob to be able to be the final person to, to comment on it. That's all. I think the quicker <coughs> and easier you can get off a of 115 on that down uh, grade, it, it makes sense. I think there's a comment about the decibel output on the mechanical equipment. Uh, let me see. Did I have anything else? Um, I'd like to see um, this go before the DRB. Oh, yeah. And no, that's a separate. Before it's come back. And the parking calculations by the uh, building commissioner. Isn't that going to be more tenant driven, though, Steve? It's use driven. It has to be decided be before the building's built. I mean, we use the same calcs as the medical office building. Well, okay. yeah, but it has to be confirmed by him because. It, it, he's the one that decides whether or not that's the right calculation. We don't calculate it. I just don't think he ever decided. He never, he never made a decision on Leo's Landing. I don't think he made a decision on the medical office building. I think we, we do this. I, I think we always get input from the, the building commissioner, don't we, on the, on the numbers? On the 80 percent. I have yet to see a letter, a ruling. It, it seems like we do this every... We'll Every project. You know what, yeah. At least put it in. If you don't get a response, we'll address yeah. it accordingly. Yeah. yeah. You know, send a letter out, Evan. Um, I'd like you to chew on the thought of the sidewalk a little bit, pros and cons of it. I'll be gagging on that, not chewing. <laughs> <laughs> it was your idea. <laughs> Move it across the street. No, no. If you want to be accurate, I was asked by the chairman at the time to give my opinion at a moment's <laughs> and notice uh, <laughs> all right and you I said move it across the i street. gave an initial opinion that it should go on the other side and then i thought about it all right so if you're asking for my expertise then goes back on the other side <laughs> yeah, yeah move it back <laughs> so to the you shouldn't hold that against me because you asked my opinion well why has your opinion changed Tom? um it hasn't changed it's just that i see you know, from project to project, a different long-term plan. You know, don't put it here. We'll let the DPW decide where to put it here. Let's just extend it here, and then we'll deal with all the other parcels. It just, it just well, that, seems that to be Well, that whole area is under development, and you know it's going to happen. So, you know, we may as well start yeah. planning on sidewalks. The problem there was the, the width of the... There was right no away. sidewalk. That's, that's the problem. No option, option on no that option. side. Right. right. No so option. And I had, and, and when I, you asked me for that <coughs> opinion, I didn't have any I idea you're, you're, that it was land, the parcel there is land courted. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you're going to have to do an eminent domain taking to get past that parcel. Well, unless they want to yep. give it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll worry so about that. We'll give it. So if you were that adamant, you should have had it on the other side with the medical office building. Bucks. If you had no, the same we'll feeling it. you have today, then you should have stuck with the original one and had the medical office building put the sidewalk in. Well, That's just my feeling. Well, the majority of the people thought that the other side of the street was a better location for the sidewalk. That's well, the way it came out when we had them, the hearing for the medical office building. And we negotiated the water line, that they're installing a water line. There's some other off-site mitigation right. that they're doing. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Fully agree with both those points. Uh, Steve, There's let me make sure I understand. So. 
you know, we're giving the applicant some some things uh, to do list, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but there's other things in here, and I don't think they're problematic. But these would also oh, apply. Oh, right? also I mean, the one. Yeah, there's a number of things right. in here. Some some of them are just the uh, markings on drawings and things like well, that. Hopefully. So I just want to make sure that yeah, we're not yeah, you should go through the way. comment letters from both of these uh, mm -hmm. consultants. Well, it's from two consultants. There's one from the chief. There's one from the DPW, and there's one from the DPW's consultant. So there's quite a few comments to, to digest. And we Anything should, from um, the Chief Stone. Yes. And we should oh. get uh, at least get some of these letters into cool. the into the record. No, that's if Stone. you want to reference oh, them, sorry. just by there is by uh, <coughs> by sorry. who they're from and no. the date of them. No. You don't have to read them. Just reference that we received them. They'll be referenced in the meeting. There. Was Chief Stone reviewing this, do you know? He was given a set of the site plans. I haven't heard, or I haven't received a comment from him. All right. Okay. So how long do you need to continue this meeting? We're, we're going to set it based on when you want to come. <laughs> yeah, you're the first. <laughs> Oh, you've got two of those. You've got one, you've yeah, got you gave me yours. No, this one's yours. Wait. It's got your handwriting. Oh, oh no. Betsy. Oh, no, no, no. That's Betsy's handwriting. Well, not July. Yeah, July 4th. Three weeks. Three weeks. We could do the 11th or the 18th. I'm on vacation the 18th. The 11th. <coughs> um, I'm on vacation the 11th. Yeah, I'm not available the 11th. Do we want to go on a different night so we're not so spread out? We we could do a different night. You, you're on Are you going to come? Well, that's a Monday. You're, so you're on vacation that but whole. No, this is June. That's June, right? I'll show you July. It would be the 16th. I have a board health meeting on the 16th. What about the 9th? Not I'm on vacation that week. Not good for me. Okay. The week of the 22nd. I'm on the vacation from the 17th to the 26th. Oh. We can. The 16th? Well, there is no, a board of health meeting. Oh. oh. So, just might not. We may have to just push it off. Yeah. Or, I mean, you can always review. <coughs> yeah. Or you can always review. That's, that's true. Yeah. Well, who, what is, what do most people, what, what date do most people feel comfortable? See, it's Walter and you are the We're same day. We're both out on that, the week of the uh, so 15th, right? So you're or the, no, the week of the 8th. Right. Yeah, yeah week of the 8th is not good for me, but the week of the 15th is okay. I think I'm the only one who couldn't do it on the 18th. And you can review it? Yep. All right. I'm available the 11th and the 18th, as far as I know. The 18th? Does the 18th of July sound good to you? Uh, how about the 15th? Monday? Or Monday the 15th. Anyone want to do it on a Monday? I can do Bet it. That's fine. It works for me. Betsy will have to remind everyone that it's Monday. Monday the fifteenth. Yeah, Monday the fifteenth sounds good to me. It, you you can make it on the fifteenth, yeah, yeah. right? Okay. Does somebody want to make that motion? I move to um, continue the hearing on Monday, July fifteenth at shall we say seven forty-five. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Looking good. Exciting. Let me see just now. A, just a, a comment, a prediction, if you will, that uh, I think that we've got such a heavy traffic load coming down in that area. We're going to be, we're going to have problems. I, I tend to agree with you that it's, it's going to be more problematic than people realize yes. it's going to be there. Yes. Which but like Tom said, the, the, that traffic study is not going to well, I, I really capture his point. a lot of that. Well, I understand his point. On the other hand, uh, looking back at the uh, layout of the medical office building, I really regret that there wasn't an exit on Valley Street. I regret that, too. Let me ask this question, though. Do we think that the circumstances are that different than 1A? On that stretch of roadway, in terms of, you know, we haven't really had problems that I'm aware of with 1A in terms of the you know, folks pulling, pulling out and pulling in and such. Well, I, I think we've got the added added uh, issue that we touched on earlier of coming down a hill like 
45 miles an hour. I mean, you don't have that on 1A, really. Well, you don't have a hill. I mean, it, it's... But you it, have I mean, a faster speed limit but on you have, Yeah, but folks are going... Oh. Say that, I bless you, Jesse. Otherwise, I might tend to agree, Walter, with you, but I'm just trying to compare 1A with that, so unless I'm missing something, I, I don't... I think there's a aware I think there's a anyway. higher traffic usage in a concentration area. Yeah, I, all those people parking at four kicks and the I, mean, I don't know what we I, I guess it, you well, but but to, I, I mean not not even to cast aspersions on, on your comment, Walter. But I mean to what end? As Tom said, we're never going to reach right, the threshold right. of what the traffic study is going to say. <laughs> 150 cars an hour for eight hours. That's only 1,200 cars. Uh, there's got to be more than 1,200 cars going by that intersection yeah, today. That's on the side street approach. Fi 500 on the main street, 150 on the side street at the thresholds. Sorry. So you, 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 it'll never happen in a parking lot. I doubt it happens on Valley Street. Mm. That, that's a huge traffic line. Mm. Steve, Lou Petrosi asked for a continuance. I was just going to ask you if you had heard from Lou. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I, I don't want to drag that out. I just say I think it's going to be a problem. It's, a, it's an yeah. excellent no, it's, point, it, yeah. It's a fair, fair comment. Yeah. And, and Bob McGee wants to have a conversation about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so when does Lou Petrosi want us to move these out to? Um, the next meeting, which, so we'll schedule him for July 15th. All right. Uh, Sandy Knoll Estates. Anyone here for Sandy Knoll Estates? Ah, okay. If you could identify yourself and, and give your information. Take a microphone. Oh, sorry. Good evening. Can we fold this guy up? Yeah. Let's I'm uh, Michael DiNapoli, uh, president of Maple Sands Corporation. This is my partner, Bill Ronka. Hi. Hi. Hey. We have an extension on our subdivision. And I think that the Commonwealth has already extended most of the permits for this year. Well, uh, when does that when does that automatic me, extension continue until? Um, well, it de depends when it was ex when the original expiration date happened, and then it continues it for four years from that. Four years from the original. Wh what's the original expiration date? The original explanation, date, I think. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not not the not necessarily the original. If it has already been extended, oh, that ex we had it extended yeah. two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I guess it would be extended four from years from that from date. Four years from that date. So you got two years already. So you got two more years, right? But that's the way I read it. Uh, uh, why don't we make it concurrent with the state then? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we we have no say in it. We it, it is concurrent with the state. But we need to at least acknowledge that. Well, at least make the motion as the board, right? Well, so well, do, well do we have an right. expiration it's, date? It's that's four time? more years. If it's expiring now, it was two years ago. It was ex extended for two years. It was extended for two years. So you get four more well, years. Well, four more years. It, yeah. it's four I thought the expiration. I thought the extensions were already passed. I thought that that. That that automatic extension if has gone by extending already. Extending from if it the was existing time frame. If it was in in, ex in existence from 2008 to 2012, August of those mm -hmm. years, it was. It gets four four years more. Oh, okay. Right. 2016. Yeah. Or or 17 if it's expiring so now. Yeah. Yeah, it was expiring in 2012. We gave them a one year extension. 2013. So, yeah, so it's, it's four more years. So 2017? Yeah. yeah. We hope that we're long gone and I'll fine. We're working on it. What do you mean by that? So we'll just draft. We have a we'll, we'll, issue. We'll, what's that? Do we have a separate issue we want to discuss there? Uh, uh, oh, you know, I thought I, I remembered something yeah. from that. Do, do you remember something from that subdivision? Is is. I mean, there, there was some issue with one subdivision. There was some Sandy Knoll. I thought there was something. Guys, are we familiar with a uh, a noise issue going on there? If we know what it was. Well, I understand that some fine gentleman wrote uh, Betsy a wonderful letter. With oh, is that the recent one? Uh, you know, that was it, an uh, eight. excuse me. And I uh, address uh, address uh, everything uh, to right. everything yeah, to the board. We're going to do and you're going to need a mic if you're going to speak. We'll have a challenge. Whatever you like to do. Okay. 
Okay, grab, grab, grab a microphone. microphone here. Identify you do, yourself. There'll be a second one. Why don't no, you hold on to that? You can each have microphones. Okay. Address everything to the board. Okay. Don't cross talk. Introduce yourself, please. Name and address. Paul Butters. I live on Kingsbury Road. I live right up back in this uh, development. And I did send the letter, and those weren't my words. They were the words of the guys that you have worked uh, on. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, they, <laughs> that they, these gentlemen have working on that piece of property. And uh, so that's... that's that's what happened. So, and the letter is, I think, self-explanatory as far as the language of what was used. It was threatening in nature. I think these gentlemen have a responsibility. Whoever's working that piece of property, that they work in accordance to that, that permit. I'm talking about the earth removal, and they haven't been, and they know it. So, now, since you spoke to them, have there's been nobody have, out there since then. There's been no one out there since. Not that I know of. Oh, okay. Sorry, we're getting notified by Donna. Can you hold the mic up? Oh, I'm sorry. It's for the people at home. Okay. The thousands. All right, now, did you speak to your contractor about this? Uh, all the employees either work for Mike or myself that are on the site, number one. Number two, we, we've been blessed with uh, our land going through the town of Norfolk and the town of Franklin. We have appropriate permits in each community across the street where we're working is the town of Franklin, which we have appropriate permits in. Across the street is the town of Norfolk, and we have appropriate permits in place with the community regarding earth removal. Now, this gentleman comes on our property. We have methods. Call the police. Call the planning board. Let them investigate. No confrontation coming in is wise, I don't think. And I wasn't there personally to find out what was said, and neither was Mike. So, I mean, again, if this gentleman has a problem, we have a method, and that isn't confrontation, at least I don't think it is. Call the police. If we're in violation, I'm sure that we'll hear from you folks. So I just went back to the question, though. Did, did you speak to your employees and ask them about what went on? I did. We, did, uh, we both did, yeah. and neither one of us got that kind of response. Uh, actually, I didn't know who, what gentleman it was until this evening, uh, but apparently he was the aggressor on our site. Again, this is private property that we're working on. Yep. Well, can I, I drove up that road that, that cuts through there. Which is a private way. Well, there's, that is used. If Don't cross talk. Okay, I'm sorry. If it's a private way, it should be either then blocked off, gated off, or there should be, the, the traffic uses that on a regular basis. So I, I didn't walk across their property. I did drive up that road, which is used by vehicular traffic pedestrians, uh, uh, you know, uh, every day. <coughs> and I was not the aggressor. What I said was, I believe that, this, these were to his work. Is I believe that you're in violation of the uh, earth removal permit out here. That uh, there are restrictions on it as far as the hours you can be working, the days, and that's his worker. Get into my face, started dropping the f bomb. If you don't effing like it, you could. You know, he, this is what he said. No, and no, I did no, call the police call, department, call, call, and I filed the right. noise complaints, and I, th I believe that they're out there in violation of the terms and conditions on that. You know what? Hours are definitely part of any order conditions of any approval, okay? And if they're operating outside those hours, I'm sure the, the police are actually empowered to act accordingly, okay? Um, you know, I've been doing this for almost 15 years between two different boards, and I couldn't tell if they violated the earth removal permit or not because I'm not qualified to do it. Um, it would take a measurement, so I don't see how any, you know, a butter could. No disrespect meant, it's just quantifying it. Well, they're not allowed to start equipment. Before time is one time. thing, yeah. amounts are another thing. I think it's a timing thing. Yeah. Right, we were not starting so. equipment. We're allowed to work on the site from 7 to 5. We Earth removal is 9 so. to 5. They were screening loom on the site. That is not earth removal when he drove in. So my son was there. And he said that he was going to shut it down and he's sick of hearing about us working over there. So I understand. He's a neighbor. I don't live there. He does. And I totally understand. What's your order but conditions? We're, we're, uh, we're, we're only there one day a week on the average. Seven to five off. Yes. Okay, so and we don't start any machine before 7. 
Well, Usually it's 10 past. I don't know. Screening loam, I, I always think of that as part of the earth removal. It is. Well, we're not taking it off site. We're screening it for the site. Well, can I, I've, I can look at them right out through my, and trucks uh, get loaded up and that stuff goes off site. One of the places I believe it's been taken to is right off of uh, uh, Myrtle, Myrtle Street at the end of Med Medway and Myrtle. Trucks come out of there and they go down the street. I've seen it. So to say it's not being removed, well, we it have is. an earth removal We're permit after we nine o'clock. Anyway, but well, uh, what is I, we haven't been delivering? Any is Tony pulling is dirt out of your site? To, no, Tony is pulling it out of his own site, and he goes down our road, right. and then where, where he goes, you know, I don't. Follow I think he's been taken out to Bellingham. There's a sign that says. My point here is we have we have a permit, and we have a procedure. If there's a violation. Have this gentleman complain to Betsy in a proper fashion. Well, we'd be more than happy to address it when we're called in before you. Well, we don't appreciate having neighbors come onto our property and confronting our employees. Simple as that. I believe Norfolk still has a police department, doesn't it? They do, and okay. and and part of what we're doing right now is warning you now that well, there's been a complaint. Right. We're going to keep our eye on you. You're, 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 we, that's that's correct. Right. That's correct. We like the attention. And most of our earth removal is for off-site. Well, you know what? We don't like the fugal tea, for one. And secondly, you know, I think so long as everybody understands the hours yep. and the rules, we do. hopefully it's not going to become an issue. Can I ask a question, though? Is there yep. a difference between site work and earth removal? Yes. There Are is. There, can I just – there doesn't – is site work uh, – in conjunction with a, a house actually about to be built because there's not there's no activity that would indicate there's anything going to happen in, in the near future what's happening out right out there right now is basically a, a commercial sand and gravel operation where stuff is being piled up and removed there's, there's no site work per se going on now I'm gonna take a ride out there myself this week yeah, I don't know if anyone else wants yeah, to but uh, wait which lots are we talking about there being an issue with? How far? On, it, it's on the right-hand side of the road as you're driving up it, right? Well, if you take Mill Street and take a, a right on to Silver Fox, I believe is the name of the street. It's, it's, it's marked private way, but it's it used all the time way. by Silver traffic. Silver Fox goes all the way out to Miller. It goes, no, yeah, and it goes right up. It goes all the way to Puppalatic also. Yeah, huh? there's huh. some point there where you cross over into Franklin. And right. when I did ask the gentleman working out there, are you in Norfolk, are you in Franklin? They said we're in Norfolk, is what they told me. So, uh, <coughs> but so how many um, lots up are we talking? We have Fourth five, lot? About approximately Fifth four lot. lots. We have five lots on that side of the street. We also have subdivision plans showing where we have to regrade, take the hills down and put it into some of the valleys. And we have been doing that. So the gravel has been disappearing from one area, and we push it into another area. Can we didn't. We already that, have terms. That's part of earth removal. That's that's what it's referred to as. Well, it's, it's moving it's, earth. It's not taking it off site. It's, it's not taking. We're, we're on Norfolk property. Don't go by your definitions. Go by our definitions. Well, Actually, so, it's, it's so earth removal every, relocation, I believe. Well, so can I ask? We're moving dirt around the. Uh, we're moving dirt on our own property right. during the period of normal work day in the town of Norfolk. Just pay attention to what you're doing because those restrictions are there for a specific reason. But it's, it says it says on our that Betsy gave me a copy of it says we can work on the site from seven to five, but earth removal is nine to five. Now, what would work in site be? If you're pushing dirt and subgrading a road like everybody else does in a subdivision, is that earth removal? How do you, wh what would you do from seven to nine then? Well, the, there's no, there's no. I mean, you could tell me. I mean, you guys we'll have the to boss. read the earth removal permit ourselves. But just pay attention to the fact that there's been a complaint. I understand. That's what's important. I, we, and he lives there. We don't. Well, I understand where the gentleman is coming from. Let me put this on the table. Uh, you know, my understanding in terms of the hours with earth removal beginning at 9 a.m. Yes. is because of school buses and such trying to get it's that traffic, traffic right. you know, off the road before you have the heavy equipment and such. So let's put that aside and let's just talk in practical terms. I mean, I think it's always a good idea to try to be a good neighbor and try to yeah, work. You know, I understand. And so what I would just ask is regardless of what's on the permit, you know, try to see if you can, you know, 
mitigate the situation. And I and I don't know what I'm asking for because I haven't visited the yeah. site. But if there's anything you can do to ameliorate the the, the problem here, please do it, regardless of what's on your after, permit. Normally after three thirty. Yeah. Okay, we work from seven to three thirty, so it, it doesn't go an hour and a half as it is uh, yeah. till five o'clock. That's normally what we do. And uh, the way we, way we work it, and uh, <coughs> we are working on both sides of the street. As some of you might remember, I don't know whether any of you were on the board when we uh, had the permit approved, but part of it's in Franklin, part of it's in Norfolk. The way the crow flies is the way the line was written, and we we think we are adhering to and cooperating with the community and trying to be a good neighbor. Again. Uh, as far as that road being open, I would just as soon close it myself. However, with the community in Franklin and the community in Norfolk, fire. police and fire and emergency vehicles, school buses, it has become a very uh, prominent way of getting over to Puppalatic and on the other side of Norfolk also. And, and also with the town, we've been a very good neighbor. We gave the town of Norfolk an easement for your water situation down on Leland Road. We just hooked up for Bob McGee. We just hooked up Franklin Water onto the Norfolk Water to boost the pressure down on Miller Street and that whole area. So we've been a good neighbor. And I, I understand where the gentleman's coming from. He lives there. I don't. And well, I'll we're say trying to be you, a good neighbor. You haven't been a good neighbor because I live right next to your piece of property and the way I was treated by these guys that's not being a good neighbor I that's think being you know hostile, what we can't you know we can't, and that's the way they were well, well, I'd, rather, I'd rather call the police guys I did go down the police you know what, so we're not getting any further right here right just basically yeah. talking yeah. at each we, other we weren't there yeah. Mike and I weren't there again I don't we'll know talk what to was him. said to by either gentleman in in the conversation uh, I all I can say to you is mr. Chipman is the gentleman had been trespassing on our property, not the other way around. I guess you know what, if and that's that's an accommodation that you've made by your own admission to the no, entire neighborhood. Actually, neighbor. it, it, the roadway may go, but the machine is not on the road. The machine was on into the property. For him to get out and go onto the property, that's oh, I, a different. I never story. left my. I, I drove We're my pickup. I never get out. I, of my, I know this issue this. might come up that I'm trespassing, so I didn't. I didn't. I use the same road like this, saying the school buses. Uh, uh, okay, here, here. in the future, right in my back. In the future, do it through the police department. You're going to have to call the police department. Don't go over there and get yourself in trouble. Do it through the police. We'll make sure that the police know that there's a restriction on the hours, and let them know what the hours are supposed to be. Well, this has been going on for a couple of years, and there's a there's a and the more often you call the police, the, the quicker door, they'll probably about, respond. Excuse me, there's a pilot door at about 50 feet high. That, are they supposed to, when they stock out, are they, are they supposed to? That's as the same as hill that was there when we purchased the property. You can check the plans. Uh, no, this you has know, been. You know how to read them. Uh, number one, I'd like this to. Just, all right, all right. His condescending uh, attitude is the attitude of each other. So that this gentleman doesn't come onto my property again without being arrested. It's as simple as that. We're in. We're not in violation. If he wants to file a complaint with the police, that's the proper venue. Then we can take it up with you. If in fact we're in violation, well, I did file that's a complaint. That's the only thing I would say. Police uh, is that if this has been going on two years and every morning at seven o'clock, it's, it's not every morning. It's not every it's morning. Not every morning. We've no, been there. Wait, well, for help me understand that. Oh, two tell weeks. Me. We haven't been there. Talk to me. How often? What? What's happening? We're there right? maybe one day a week. We're doing curbing now. We're doing guy. sidewalks now. We're going to get ready for paving. I have not spoken to this gentleman ever. Not him. Your guy. You must have spoken to your guy. Yeah, he did. We did. And, th and the, he told the, you what kind of language he used? The story that we got was not what was not related what, by this gentleman. You know, and it is three sides of the story. His side, our side, and the truth. So we'll talk to our gentleleman tomorrow. You don't have to believe me. I'm telling you, I wouldn't have put that in writing and signed my name to it if that was not what happened. I mean, that's a, that's a police matter. Yeah, I mean, let the police I mean, it. Do I don't want to argue with But everybody. do we really want to start, like, scrutinizing every drop of dirt, no, everything no, else? No, 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 no. Well, that's why we have a permit. I understand. But you know what? Permits in reality don't always line up. We don't want to get to that point. Yeah, right. I agree. So... Well... Play nice. But, you know, That's the, all we can the say. thing with the with the working at seven o'clock. I mean, to get subs in there, paving, and you guys would know yourself if you're doing paving, sidewalks, curbing, all the stuff that went on one fifteen. Nobody starts at nine o'clock. 
no subs are going to come in and start at nine o'clock. Yeah. I mean, everybody's in the construction industry starts at seven o'clock. We've had it down at one fifteen and that whole area for three years down there. I mean, and, they're not and, starting at nine o'clock. You know, and I you won't remove earth until after nine o'clock, and that's very seldom. And removal been in there all winter. And the removal of earth, earth uh, restriction is exactly for what Jeff said. Yeah, it's not to have conflicting with normal commuter traffic school bus traffic things like that right that's why yeah, it's not is there a gray area between pushing it around and throwing it in the back of a truck and bringing it over to myrtle well, that's, uh, actually, that's just that's don't that, do it before that nine a, that is an us that is an us to tony goes through the marinella but, but but don't I wish it was uh, you know or whoever's it is let's just don't ever come I'm off your site paid before for nine. It, so I, I didn't deliver it okay i think we've got it nailed down good I hope <laughs> yeah i hope so too we will make an attempt to try to accommodate and be more cognizant of our neighbors, including this gentleman. We would appreciate that. Yeah. And I, we will do that. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you. meanwhile, don't, don't we take a vote on this? What? On the extension? Or is it. Do you want to extend well, it? Or do we need to extend it? We don't really. We don't have to extend it. Just put it in the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or we could send them a memo. Well, Patrick extended it. Did you want to? Did you want to just send him a memo? If you want to just draft a little memo that says we discussed it and it, it's extended, and you can give the exact date that it's extended to. Any new business? Toils and Road A and R and endorse Mylar. What's this? Toils and Road. What part of Toils and Road? Across the street from the previous one. Across the street from the previous one. What? Remember uh, Mr. Pazuti? Yeah. This is state law and two A and R lots. Mm. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, off of Grove yeah, Street. Yes, yeah. off of Oh, side okay. Of <laughs> <laughs> well, it goes from from Rentham to yeah. Medway. Oh, or Milford. Does it really? Yeah. It goes that far. Yeah. Wasn't this even voted a town meeting? Wasn't there? Uh, because yeah, the, the street was accepted at town meeting. Up to, up to that part. We haven't yeah. signed the A and R. Well, the the A and R is for the lot. It's new. They're it's new. Two new lots there. On it. Oh, oh, oh. Here are the okay. houses. Here's the existing house. Oh, Here's oh, this okay. state lot. Here's this one. Here's like Mike Denman's lot. They, they're actually it's two lots now, but they're horizontally oriented. Oh, with yeah. One with a just a thin strip. Out to Toils End Road, and he's just reorienting them to be compliant with current zoning. Now you're saying which? They, they don't. A yeah. thin strip where? No, well that's the new that's the new plan. The oh, original oh, okay. the original lots had. Uh, you, you see how there's so a jog on the yeah, left the side. Yeah, jog. Yes. Okay. Th that was originally access to the back half of the two lots. At, they were they were combined as one lot. The back oh, half. Oh, okay. Oh, it, when it went this way. Yes, and exactly. This oh, exactly. Back lot. Okay. That's it. Okay. Lot yeah, 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 didn't yeah, they yeah, yeah. buy one of them off like an estate bounty hunter, a guy that basically makes his living? Oh, really? Owner unknowns, yeah. Oh, wow. And he ended up buying a piece off to create two lots. Wow. Okay. Boy, they really put you civil to use them brand. down this little road all of a sudden. There. Actually, th a that's a lot. Road. It's actually, nice. I was uh, out there looking at that house the other day yeah. up here on the state lot. Yeah. yeah. It's actually, I think putting these two houses here is yeah. really going to make it nice. I do, too. I think it's nice setting. It's I would love to be able to just connect it all the way through. That well, really talk to the homes. They're the one with the 80 say. acres. <laughs> so there's, there's no question with this, then? No, there were a couple of minor technical things which have been fixed, so oh. it's fine. So who wants to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the plan of uh, land on Toils End Road, um, pre prepared for Toils End Trust, 336 South Street, Hyannis, Mass., dated June 10th, 2013. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Done. Do we have a mile hour also? Yep. Mile hour. Oh. oh. Is this one of the ones that we have to sign here? Get this one out of the way. What else do we have here? CPC appointment. 
Can we agree we'd postpone that until after we settle the... Uh, yes, the yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Vouchers, did you have vouchers? Are you have, have you already circulated them? No. Oh, okay. Meeting minutes? Oh, I was going to read those, wasn't I? Why? Oh. I forgot all about oh. those. <laughs> That's Walter's job. No, 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 no. no, no. There's ones. a couple here that oh. that um, yeah. he wasn't here for. Uh, Oh, and um, the um, the hearings for the associate member, the Board of Selectmen would like to have it as a single meeting. Now, do we have a, a particular date that we might like to do it with them? They meet every Tuesday? Every, uh, every other. When, Donna, do you know when the next meeting is? Tuesday. Next week. Oh, that's a little soon. Yeah, that's a little soon. Uh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Next week is the 25th, right? Yeah. So w what's what's July there, uh, Michelle? Well, so the 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 ninth right. or the 23rd. The 25th is the Milo. Does anyone? How, how do you guys feel about the 23rd? Are you um, around that week? Or I'm is that the here. week you're not? I'm the one who's not. Oh, you're, do you mind if if, uh, if we... Uh, mm. oh. It's a problem for me, too, the 23rd. Oh. Oh, okay. I'm available right up to that week, but I, it's a problem. Just to throw it out there, the same day as our meeting, Monday yeah. the 15th. They, they oh, come here. We could invite them to ours. Yeah, we could invite them to ours. They That's a good idea. Would, I saw it on TV. Why don't you, why don't you <laughs> ask them come if they want to come to our meeting on the 15th? That might be. That's a really good idea. Yeah, that is a good idea. I like that one. You sign that? Yeah, if you would. Now the w another one. What was there was something else. Oops, what sorry. Was, what was the other thing that? Uh, oh, oh. We the. So we need to sign the bylaws. No, we we have to have another person to uh, go on this small Stop little subcommittee that is being put together by. Um, it's a joint subcommittee from the Add planning on. board and the uh, board of selectmen, and it's for uh, to look at any issues with stop and shop and to try to entice them to construct the building or to construct something or to do something with the property. Now we have one volunteer and it's Walter and Peter can't do it. So do either of you guys want to um, do that? Did, Michelle, did you want to uh, I am definitely out. interested in it. My only concern is with the, and, and it's sort of a pro and a con. It's my lack of history and knowledge of the, of the issues going on over there. And, and you know, oh, the sorry. good part about it is I can bring a fresh perspective, and not, you know, with any baggage. I think the bad part about it is what I was thinking that night when we met with the board of selectmen was, it would be great to be as strategic as possible going into that meeting. And being strategic means you understand all the issues so that you can, you know, then present yourself properly. So that's my only reservation. I, I am very interested. I'm, that's just my only concern. And I know that Jeff does have a lot more history. Are you interested in it, Jeff? No. To be honest with you, I, I think Michelle would represent the board. I thought well, so, too. I, I, I do, Michelle. And if there's any perspective, you know, we'll certainly I'll speak Any myself, history. You I'm can sure be filled we'll in on any we'll, history. We'll update yeah. you and make sure. It's it's the history. They've had a permit for six years and they haven't built. And the crosswalk. It's the history. That's right. Yeah. And, and, if, and if you need somebody <coughs> else to participate because <coughs> you can't make <coughs> one of the meetings or something, <coughs> yeah. I, yeah, yeah. if I'm available, I'll jump yeah, in. Yeah, that would be my only other problem. This is clearly not about crosswalks. No, 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 no. They're separate issues. We've we've decided to maintain them as completely I think you do separate a great issues. Job. Bring your own brick. Yeah, Th that's why yeah. we have. Mm -hmm. it. My so. only other concern would be time commitment, but I don't think we're going to be bogged down in lots of meetings on this, so I, I don't. No, I don't think it, so I don't either. think it being a huge time sap. So. 
So yeah, they're I'm trying to find some way to approach stop and shop and get them yep. to commit to something. Yep. That's that's kind of what the <coughs> well, whole thing I, is. Uh, actually, I think the first action we have to do is all agree on a common objective because I. Well, that's what the, that's what the three objective. of you are going to discuss right away. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, you'll what bring it? it back. What is? Because if we ask. You, Five people, you get five different answers. That's, That's why there's only three people involved <laughs> between the two boards. So that's three objectives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are we doing with this pole, uh, flag poles? We're going to schedule a special permit. For flag poles? What? Wait, yeah. Do we want a flag on it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, they've always had a permit. Uh, it, expired. it expired. They never renewed it. Oh, okay. With the zoning board, now it's permitted through the planning board. Who is uh, who's the carrier? You kick them off. You could get in trouble. T-Mobile. Other people in town. T-Mobile. <laughs> oh, okay. Interestingly, they don't seem to be proposing any changes. Just, just renewal. Paperwork. When all the other sites, they're changing the antennas adding out, to it? or or adding to it. Yeah, usually they change the technology. At the I've, I've heard point. that they're going to smaller um, coverage, but more frequent repeaters. That's how it seems. The technology seems to be going. Google, well, Google's trying to do balloons. Well, Google's trying to do balloons. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hawaii. Well, the the New Zealand. Well, third world countries they're doing balloons. They start in New Zealand. They don't have any poles. <laughs> Guy had it for, he said, yeah. five minutes or something, and then the balloon got out of range. <laughs> the he so checked the weather, he said, though. He was able to get the weather. Check. Well, they said that they, they know all the air currents, and they raise and lower the balloon to try to direct it so that they know which way the balloon should go at different heights so that they can keep it <laughs> in, a, in a, a specific location. Noah has a site <laughs> down where I live in the Cape, and they regularly put up weather balloons there. It's pretty cool to watch. So All right. Did we, um, do we have anything else? I think we've covered everything. Is there anything else that we haven't left out? That we've left out? Did, well, well you didn't, you didn't, did you, you want to schedule this hearing for the, for the same 15th on the no. 15th? For yeah, we didn't it should flight. be pretty straightforward since they're not oh, oh the public anything. hearing for the meeting house oh yeah yeah um, you know what your last agenda item Steve here for our next meeting um, Ken Brown had, had called me um, and I just referred him to Betsy on this he wants to come in so you know um, to remove the frontage road requirement from colonial fence that's his request for the site plan modification just so you know. Is that a minor modification? That's something for the board to take yeah. up when it's a duly <laughs> posted agenda item. <laughs> well, I guess we should have Betsy schedule these for the next right? Is there enough time for her to advertise on the public hearing? Well, it's well we have to weeks. act on it first. Yeah. So it's more than two weeks yeah. away. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's four weeks. So the agenda items for the next week, uh, for the next meeting, we're going to have those scheduled for the 15th, the same as the... Yep. Uh, when do you want to, what time do you want to schedule this um, public hearing for the, um, the flag? Um, flag call. Flag. We have one at 745. Yeah, that's Bonville, Bonville. is coming, Bonville. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah that's going to be at least 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. schedule it for 830? 830, yeah. We'll still probably be a little bit late, but... Unlike the flagpole in most people's front yards, this one is 90 feet high. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been there forever, though. And it should have a 30-foot flag on it. Yeah, I think there's a specific <laughs> condition that says they, they have to put the flag up and down every day or something like that. <laughs> really? <laughs> Unless it's that's not lit. Like no, unless it's lit. That's, no, right. that's, that's right. flag. Yeah, that's uh, regular flag. Etiquette. Exactly. Etiquette. Yeah. Right. I mean, we have a light at uh, Pond Street <coughs> with the flag right there. It's law. <coughs> is it? Yeah. Well, so who would do that? DPW. Well, they would have to put a light. You well, either light it or oh. put it up and down every day. <coughs> right over there. They would light it, obviously. Fine. <laughs> 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 All right. And that's privately owned or leased, right? That site? That's privately owned, I believe. Yeah, it's Borelli's. No, no, no. But oh. he has a lease. Oh, he has a lease for the site. Yes, right. yes. Right. <coughs> Do I have a uh, motion to adjourn? I have uh, one more oh, thing. Uh, I have one four, more thing. Four sets of minutes. Eight, two from April. Yeah, we already looked at those. I, I, I had said that. No, uh, no, no, no. Oh no. no.
I reviewed them this past week. So and as did Walter reviewed the ones from May. Oh, oh, <coughs> oh there's new ones that are not on here. Oh, okay. Well, there's the, the May ones, and then there's two April two ones. Two April ones, which um, April 11th and 22nd, which have all been re reviewed. So I'm going to move to accept the meeting minutes from April 11th, April 22nd, May 9th, and May 28th. And I will second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well done. <laughs> You're okay. Do I have a motion for adjournment? I'll make that motion. 10, 15. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are we done, Donna? Mm.